Welcome to the Elite Podcast Network, home of the number one independent wrestling coverage, available on iTunes, Stitcher, Blog Talk Radio, and wherever you get your podcasts from. Follow us on Twitter at Elite Podcast Net and join the revolution now. Yesterday was my birthday. Tomorrow you got Ring of Honor All Star. Uh, you know what? I can't. I can never pronounce it. And freaking um, w- yeah. And uh, and you got United Champions on Sunday. We're all good. Tom, huh? that's how we do it. That's how we do it here. Another another stacked show on here, man. I, I, I hate to, you know, toot our own horn because I think we're doing enough. But, man, we are pulling out all the stops. We are doing it big because we always do. And we uh, continue AWS week here on WH Radio as we have our special guest here at the time. You may know him from here here, here in the SoCal area, from PWG to AWS to Champions Trust from Hollywood to Lucha Underground. His resume keeps going up higher and higher. We want to welcome Famous B. What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be on the show for the first time, uh, making my debut tonight here on WrestleHeads Radio. So what's up to all the fans out there and uh, and to you guys? And uh, happy birthday, man. Happy birthday yesterday. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. I uh, really appreciate that. I had a nice, good-ass meal in the field yesterday, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up right there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Uh, happy birthday again, Oscar. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and get to the show. Um, uh, Famous B. Uh, uh, here on the show, us three, we know you well, but I'm pretty sure there's some folks out there that's probably listening don't, that don't know too much about Famous B. Famous B. Uh, tell us how you um, you know, got started in the business uh, and uh. In a uh, uh, wrestling. Well, I got started in a business um, actually because I got a flyer from the Santino Brothers Wrestling Academy, in which um, you know I decided to call up Joey Chaos, and um, you know I went down, and at the time they were just getting started. They had just actually opened the doors uh, of the academy, probably like a couple months prior to me coming in. But um, I gave Joey a call, man, and just decided to, you know, go down and see what what it was all about. I had always been a wrestling fan. So um, when I got the flyer, you know, that was my first knowledge of actually being being able to go to a place or an actual facility where you could actually train to become a professional wrestler. So, you know, I thought about it a couple of weeks. I uh, gave Joey Chaos a call, went down, and, uh you know, I never looked back. The rest was history after that. So, uh, you know, that's how I, that's how I got started. Yeah, man. You know, it's crazy because that's one thing I didn't know. I didn't know that you uh, trained at Santino's. I thought you like you know trained somewhere else and you like worked with the promotion a lot. So that's something new to me. Uh, but yeah, because like uh, I know this past was it maybe last week uh, we saw you at the Santino's uh, dojo. You was uh uh, doing a commentary, that was pretty dope. You were pretty funny there. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, I just try to mix it up. I mean, like I said, I, I mean, I follow professional wrestling my whole life, man. So, you know, everything from the in ring to you know to promos to commentating to you know every every aspect of professional wrestling is what I'm into. You know, so um, 
you know, it's, it's, it's natural to uh, sit down there and call the action and uh, call the matches and things like that. And, you know, there's a lot of great talent at Santino Brothers Wrestling Academy to feed off of. So, you know, they make it very easy. <laughs> they make my job very easy. So, uh, so yeah, so it was pretty fun. I like getting, you know, taking a step back from the ring and just getting behind the mic and just doing other things in the business and not just focusing on the end ring, which is obviously still very important to me. But, you know, I like to uh, do other things in the business as well, outside of the ring. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oscar, uh, you want to go ahead and ask a question, bro? Yes, um, I, I, I knew that you did train in uh, Santino's Academy. I, I think I saw some old videos of you um, yeah. training. Like, you had short hair or something back in the day or something. So <laughs> yeah. You were there during the Norwalk days, I believe, too. When they right, absolutely. The store. Yeah, yeah. Um, my question about the Academy, um, I have some friends that, that are actually in the Academy right now. Um, mm-hmm. I also want to know, like, besides training, like how you do like moves and all that stuff, what about character-wise? Do you choose to be the character, or does Chaos come up with the idea like, okay, you should be, a, like, for example, you should be a, a magician, or you should be a freaking <laughs> uh, construction worker? Uh, is, is, is character in the way like it, that helps you out, or that's something that you choose, and maybe Chaos will help you out with like what kind of character you want to be? Right. Well, I think what it is is, I think what it is, um, obviously, as you're training and you're getting comfortable and you're getting, you know, and, and you're in the ring and um, things like that, and you're starting to, you're starting to develop, develop who you are. You know, so it kind of goes a little bit hand in hand with um, the actual in ring training and then whatever ideas you may have, you know, because we may have a guy who doesn't have any idea of what his character is or what it's going to be or how he wants to portray himself in a wrestling world. Um, so, in that case, then yeah, um, it'd be something to the effect of where, you know, uh, the trainers, whether it be Joey, Robbie, myself, or any other other um, veterans at Santino Brothers would um, pretty much kind of guide that student in that direction of uh, which way to go with their character based off their look and uh, based off their mannerisms in the ring and things like that. Um, I know me personally, I had a pretty good idea of who I wanted to be, um, how I wanted to portray myself, what my in-ring character would be. Even, even up to my name, Famous B, um, was all, you know, pretty much – in my head <laughs> and thought of by me. So when I was doing little things um, in training week after week, like wearing the uh, Bluetooth at first or, you know, with the glasses or my jacket and my image, the way I looked, it was just something that they saw sticking with me, so they just let me run with it. So it's a little bit of both. You know, if you have an idea, a clear-cut vision of who you want to be, then you, you bring that to the table and you present it, and then it it, it will be critiqued and kind of maybe even, um, you know, uh, you know, probably change a thing here or there or whatever the case may be. Um, but um, if, if it's money, it's money, and then, you know, you're able to ride with it. Uh, so it, it, it just depends on the individual. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I also have another question about you. Like, I, I've been following you for the last couple of years, and uh, how I first discovered you, was actually in championship wrestling from Hollywood. I used to see you then, you know, then they had a match in there. And then mm-hmm. I started going to shows. And then um, I noticed that the last time I saw you there was uh, when they had it in the Converse Casino. And right. my question is to you, what happened to you in championship wrestling from Hollywood? Like, I, I noticed that I haven't, I didn't even see you not even once at the time when they moved to Port Wyimi. So uh, what happened to you in championship wrestling from Hollywood? Like, why are you not, there today um well i wouldn't say anything in particular happened um i just would i just think that uh at the time at the point in time they had a different direction for where where, where they wanted to go and i don't think that i fit the uh, criteria or fit the mold and what they were trying to accomplish at the time um there wasn't anything specific or or anything like that it's just you know it came to the point where you know the creative um just didn't really have very much for me. So, you know, being a, being a competitor, being someone who um, definitely wants to uh, be in the, in the fold or in the mix or in the thick of things, um, you know, I didn't see that that was happening.
happening for me at that particular point in time. So, you know, that's that's pretty much what happened, to, to be honest with you. Yeah. All right, all right. Spacey so pretty much had nothing for you, and, yeah, that's, yeah it's pretty much separate. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go back to Tom. Uh, Tom, you have a question for him? Yeah, the way I discovered you famous, T, and I think a lot of people know you from, was PWG back in 2011, which is when I started actually watching PWG. And right. you saw so many people around that time, a lot of high flyers, but I always thought you stood out. So talk about how you got into PWG and just talk about uh, your time there, even though it was a short time. Uh, I imagine it was right. still a blast. Right, right. No, absolutely. Uh, PWG was awesome, man. I mean, that that still to this day, um, actually my in my debut match with PWG to this date really was um one of the one of the funnest matches and uh, a very actually a really emotional match for me. <laughs> because that's that's just how passionate the fans are. They they bring it out. So, you know, um I, I got into P W G during the um I guess you could say uh new talent movement <laughs> because I debuted with uh Ray Rosa, Chris Cadillac and uh uh Fidel Bravo at the time and um I was actually uh, approached by Joey Ryan, um, you know, to debut with the other three individuals. And um, I went into that match. It was a six-man tag team match, me, Cadillac, and uh, Candice LeRae uh, versus Ray, Peter, and um, Freddie Bravo. And we went out there, man, and just, of course, the nerves are going because it's like it's gorilla. You know, you got to show up. You got to show out. You got to be on top of your game. You have to perform. You know, uh, fans are very smart to what's going on. They're very hit. So, I mean, you, you really don't have chance. You don't have a chance uh, to for any missteps or mistakes or any hiccups or anything like that. So, of course, pressure was on and nerves was on. Um, but we went out there, man, and we just killed it. We tore it up. We had a good match. And then uh, when we got that "Please Come Back" chant, <laughs> and the fans are going crazy, you know, it was it was very emotional for me. Like I had to hold back a lot of emotion uh, when the referee was raising our hands in victory. But um, yeah, my time at PWG was awesome. Um, I had a, a couple of uh, well, I had a couple of good matches in PWG. I had a singles match against uh, B Boy at the time at uh, Def. Saw, but metal. Um, I wrestled Joy Bryan there, singles. Um, we had a big eight man tag team match. Um, also did a uh, tag team match with me and Chris Cadillac versus the Fighting Taylor Brothers, uh, Ryan Cage and Ryan Taylor. And uh, me and Benny even teamed there against the Rockness Monster. So I had a handful of good matches in PWG, and PWG is always going to stick out as uh, a very fun place to work and um only the best of the best get put that get booked at pwg so you know i definitely enjoy my time there and um who knows if we'll see famous b back there in the future and that would be dope uh famous yeah. b uh back back in pwg uh me myself you know uh i i go to probably every pwg show and it would be nice to have you uh there uh you know Mixing it up with guys like uh, a Trevor Lee or uh, maybe uh, and, a Tommaso Ciampa or somebody, you know, it would be something different, you know. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Who knows what the future holds. Yeah. Yeah, um, and it's funny because you mentioned that Joey Ryan match. The one thing that sticks out, and I know it's a bad thing, but it was your suicide dive where it looked like you, you, you almost damn near broke your neck. And I'm like... Oh, uh, these these guys are going a little bit too hard. I don't want to see anybody get hurt, but I know you're just uh, doing your own thing. But that, it just made me cringe a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes when I watch the footage back, uh, it's it's this one guy who's standing back there, and the the reaction <laughs> when I landed actually face first on a cement <laughs> on the ground there. Uh, the reaction from the one guy just stands out in my head. He's just like, oh, and he's just like shaking his head and shaking his hands like frantically, like, dang, I can't believe I just saw that. But yeah, but that's uh, that's what gorilla do to you, man. It'll it'll make you go out there and put a, and and. Just risk it all. I mean, every time you step in a ring, it's, it's obviously a huge risk. But um, Gorilla is that one place where everybody knows. You know, it's it's just you know, you don't don't hold anything back. You know, we don't hold anything back when we step in that ring, in Gorilla. No doubt, no doubt. Skits, go ahead, man. 
Yeah, uh, since we're talking about uh, promotions, talk to us um, how you uh, um, got in touch with uh, BART and uh, AWS and how you started uh, doing work there. Well, uh, you know, obviously AWS has been around for a while. Um, I actually did a um, it was a, it was a show that Bart put on quite some time ago where um, it was pretty much like an open invitation for all talent you know to come out and he kind of did like a like a mixed tag team kind of I don't I don't know how to describe it it was like uh, it was just oh or he had the fans pull the names out the hat and all the fans would um, you know they would pull the name out the hat and whoever they pulled out would partner with each other. And then wrestle another random pair of um, opponents. So that was pretty much, um, well, pretty much my official debut. I, I also um, worked the um, the largest battle royal that Bart put on a couple years ago. Um, that was at my actual AWS debut. But then um, a couple years later, I came back for um, for that event where where the fans drew partners for each other, and then I wrestled. That night, and then um, a couple shows later, um, you know, I was rocking and rolling every single show. So, um, AWS has, uh, has been wonderful. It's been a blast. Um, it's been, it's really been home to me um, as of late, like the past year, year or so. Um, I've done some incredible things at AWS. Um, I won, you know, obviously the lightweight championship. AW, twice. Yeah, two, twice. Yeah. yeah. I think you had blast. Was, like, me, me as a fan, I think you had a great year with uh, AWS. Uh, I definitely enjoyed the uh, one match that sticks out that I enjoyed was the match where you and Eli Everfly. That match was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was the Santino Bros uh, joint show um, that we did with uh, with Bart. Where actually Joey and uh, Joey Chaos and uh, B Boy main evented and won. Uh, the that was a crazy year. match too. <laughs> At that show, um, yeah. So that was definitely a fun show. It, it stood out to me too. Um, that match with Eli Everfly, um, a good up and coming um, talent from Santino Brothers, and um, yeah, that was an awesome match. Uh, I, I mean, I've had so many good AWS matches, man. I could just, man, just rifle them all off, man. It's hard to uh, put them up against each other because every single one of them has been fun and um you know bart's put me with some great competitors and booked me in some solid solid matches and man i've had so many um the main event uh that uh me and b-boy wrestled for the aws heavyweight championship was was one that stands out at the uh first uh bushido pro and aws joint show um, and uh, recently, my match with uh, Sanjay Dutt was a uh, very good and stands out to me too as well. So, yeah, man, I've been on a hell of a ride with AWS, man, and it's been nothing, you know, nothing but fun. Yeah. Um, speaking of AWS, on on the twenty sixth of September, uh, you're you're going to be uh, in a main event match. It's going to be Willie yeah. Mack and P.P. Ray versus Cholo, B-Boy, and yourself. That match is going to be ridiculous just by reading all the names in the main event. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, your thoughts on this main event, and you main event in the uh, uh, last uh, AWS uh, event for a while. Well, man, I'm very honored and very humbled to be in the mix, and um to be on a to be in the main event to be on the marquee of this show is going to be a fantastic show from top to bottom no doubt it's the last one for quite some time but um to be the main event man it's 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 very humbling and um you know when Bart approached me and um he told me what the idea was and he told me what the match was it was just like right in my mind right off the back the first thing I thought was like wow we're gonna go ape shit <laughs> that, that was that was my first thought man and um. You know, you know, all I mean, all five competitors are extremely talented competitors in their own right. Whether it be the tag team of PP Ray or Ray Rosas or Peter Avalon as a singles wrestlers, you know, are you know, obviously both very dynamic, very charismatic. Um, anytime you're on the show and these guys come out, you know it's going to be a good time. You know it's going to be a hell of a match, man. They they work so hard and they're so good together. They're one of the best tag teams, in my opinion, on the scene right here in SoCal right now. 
And then, of course, you got Willie Mack, who's tearing it up left and right. Um, this guy is, is, is traveling all over, and um, he's also the current AWS heavyweight champion. And um, that's a hell of a team. But then you look at our side, and you got myself, you got B-Boy, and you got Cholo. You got three Lucha Underground talent who could very well <laughs> have, been, have been the crew. <laughs> if you ask me. Because it's funny, because I actually um, auditioned uh, for the crew right before Lucha Underground started. But uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there. But um, yeah, man, oh, it's going to be a hell it's gonna be a hell of a six man tag team match and um you know, it's it you know, I'm in the ring with all my brothers and um, you know, we've traveled traveled up and down, you know, all across the states, all up and down California together, you know, as a team, um, as opponents, um and, you know, it's just it, it it's gonna be a very special match. It's it's a special night to me. And uh, once again, just to be in the main event, I'm very humbled by it and I know that we're going to send AWS off this year with a blast. Believe that. You want to get to Southgate September 26th because I'm telling you, man, we're going to rock the house. We're going to bring it. We're going to leave everything that we have in the ring. It's one of those special matches to me, and uh, I'm going to leave it all on the line. I'm leaving it all on the line, man. I'm totally looking forward to this match most definitely, and um, I can't wait, man. The 26th can't get here fast enough. <laughs> Two more weeks. I'm ready. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. We can have um, <laughs> definitely. Uh, um, Oscar, go ahead, bro. Yes, um, I like to go back to Santino's. Uh, I know you're doing like commentating and all that stuff right now, but any chance you'll be back in the in the Santino ring anytime soon? The reason why? Because I, I feel like the time when you had the submission title, I mean, you had a great run. And um, not not to offend, nothing against BC Killer or anything, but that submission title should be like held to guys like either yourself, Eli Everfly, maybe a Ray Rosas as well. I mean, Tyler so Bateman. Why look at BC or Bateman? Yeah, I mean, when I think of BC Killer, I think he's like a you know like a hardcore guy, death match guy, you know, like a Supreme and and uh, homeless Jimmy. I, I feel him, you know, he's in that kind of character, but. Uh, I mean, is there any chance we'll see you back in the Santino's ring? It felt like it's been a while since I've seen you in the ring in the Santino's. Right, right. No, it has been a while. Um, I'm, I'm taking a back seat to do some um, to do some behind the scenes work uh, with Joy and 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 to do some managing and things like that. Managing um, just you know the operations. Um, so uh, yeah, I've taken a back seat from the airing work at Santino's, even though I'm heavily involved behind the scenes, very heavily. Um, you will see me back in the ring very soon. I will be, I will be participating in the October 10th show in Southgate, um, uh, Theosophy. I will be on the card. I will be wrestling. The match hasn't announced yet, but um, you will see me back in action very soon. So we have a show on September 25th the day before um, the last AWS show. Um, I won't be on that card. I will be in attendance. I won't be on the card, but you will see me back in the Santino Brothers ring October 10th for sure. Yeah, since you mentioned... And, uh, I was just going to say, uh, since he just mentioned the 25th show, I just want to let everybody know that's listening. Main event, Tyler Bateman versus Eli Everfly. The match should be crazy. Eli... Killed it uh, at the last Santino show with Ray Rosas, and I'm pretty sure him and Charlie Bateman will. Go ahead. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. That's that. That's gonna be a pretty sick match. Yeah, definitely. Um, for of all the students that's training right now in Santinos or just doing the shows, um, who who? There's a couple of names out there we should keep an eye on, like maybe an Eli Airfly or. A, Brody King, like who in your mind should like everybody that's listening should keep an eye on? Oh, well, right now, definitely Eli Everfly is um, one of the fastest rising Santino Brothers students within the last couple of years. Um, this kid right here is tearing it up on the ones and twos. He's really doing his thing. Every time you see him in a ring, you know you're going to be treated to a fantastic match. Um, you know he, he may be small, but don't underestimate his size because what he what, what he lacks in size, he makes up with his heart. 
So um, yeah. this guy right here is definitely somebody to um, be on the lookout for. Uh, you mentioned Brody King. Brody King is, um, you know, one of our monsters that is coming up right now. And, um, you know, shout he's just Brody. getting his feet wet. Yeah, shout out to Brody. Brody King, he's just getting his feet wet. And um, he debuted a couple of Santino shows ago. Shows ago. Um, but this guy is no joke. He's not to be played with. He has a great look. He's a, a big, solid guy. And um, he's 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 a monster. So, you know, he's yeah. been tearing, tearing talent up as of late. So, you know, I, I don't see anybody stopping him anytime soon. And then, of course, you got Hoss Hodge, Che Cabrera, who's been around for a while. But, yeah, we got a great mix of guys, you know, who's coming up. And, and, and of course, you know, we keep producing. We're training talent, uh, you know, weekly, uh, multiple days a week. So you never you never know who's going to pop up. You know, we got this uh, one girl named Heather. She's coming up. She's going to be debuting very soon. We also got another kid named Austin who's really good. He's going to be debuting very soon. So, you know, we're, we're, we're pumping and producing talent. But, you know, obviously it goes by, you know, you know, we're we're teaching and we're training, but it goes by the individual. It goes by the talent. You know, if you if you have if you have enough passion and you have the heart and you have and you have the intestinal fortitude to make it through all that, then you know you'll you'll, you'll be on a scene. You'll be on a rise very soon. So you know, we got some guys and gals who have done that, and you know, we got a good group coming up. I'm kind of yeah, happy you um, said there's some girls coming up because uh, I believe the last girl I can remember that's been killing it, and she's probably one of the best out here in SoCal, and that's Ray's. Right, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So Ray's is going to yeah, need some competition pretty soon. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's going to need some competition. It is another name that uh, Skits mentioned me earlier, um, earlier in the day, but uh, Charming Biagio, that's a – I mean – he, he, I mean, the, what, he's cool. No, I like the character. I, you know, there's fans cheating. You know, the Chad Breeze is gorgeous because you know it's, it's kind of like the same character of Tyler Breeze. But there's another, that's another right. name that uh, I've been seeing him around as of late. I saw him at uh, UEW like a couple weeks ago. You know, he defending right. his title. Yeah, that's another name that you know uh, Skip's been mentioning. So I know he's training at your school as well. Um, right, right, right. Um, yeah, Biagio is a um, is a graduate from the academy as well, and he's doing his thing too. And um, yeah. you know, he he's making waves on the scene right now as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, uh, you know what's funny about you when you mentioned Brody Keen? I mean, at that last Tarantino show, I was all laughing when he got in the face of uh, at Deshaun Cents, dude. So, <laughs> I mean, he actually got in his face. I was like, oh shit! <laughs> and I was sitting there oh, like that. I was like, you know, yeah, that's, I, should tell him to give him, I don't want him to attack the dude. <laughs> yeah, Brody's no joke. He doesn't play around, man. He doesn't care who you are. He just wants to beat people up, you know. So talent or fans, it doesn't matter. He just wants to beat you up. So you know, so <laughs> well, if you're gonna um, if you're gonna if you're gonna boom boom from your chair, man, because this guy doesn't care. <laughs> I know. Well, all I gotta say is he should be happy we're actually talking about him. But <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But anyways, I'm going to go pass it to Tom. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, obviously one of the big things you've been involved in in the past year was Lucha Underground, which exploded. I, we've talked about it every single week, how great it was, how great of a show it was. And you were on there multiple times, numerous times. Talk about your experience there. Talk about just getting that feeling of knowing that you're on national TV in front of – who knows how many people. Right. Oh, man, it's absolutely incredible. It's just another um, another milestone achievement of, um, you know, uh, great opportunities I've had in my career. You know, I've done uh, national pay-per-view before and uh, things like that, but uh, nothing, nothing has come close to what I've experienced this past year on Lucha Underground, man. It's such a it's such a humbling experience and it's such a blessing to be on national TV to work for um, a team such as Mark Burnett, um, who is just, you know, who obviously they know television, they know what they're doing. Um, you know, the way they took care of us, the way they treated us was just, you know, unbelievable. Um, it was a very cool, super cool, super fun locker room. Um, just to, you know, be in a presence and be coached um, by guys like Chavo, guys like Conan, guys like Vampiro, uh, and just just to be around and just to get that experience to learn not only from them coaching myself, 
But um, just to be around conversations where they're working with other talent, like, you know, like Pr- Prince Puma, like Ricochet, things like that, uh, Mil Mortis, and, you know, just all the cast, you know. Um, just to be around and be in the atmosphere and then, um, you know, to build a relationship with those guys and build a connection is one of the, you know, key things and, you know, it's very important to me and things like that. And, um, you know, since then I've I've been able to build, you know, connection and and relationship with guys that are in AAA. Um, a lot of the talent there, you know, are, you know, where, where now I can say they're my friends, you know. And um, to be able to go go down and, and work with them a little bit too, you know, just by meeting in Lucha Underground. So Lucha Underground has definitely been, you know, one of those things where it's, you know, like I said, it's just it's just an honor and very humbling, um, you know, to be around and to be, you know, to be featured on TV on a national platform. And, um, you know, like everybody else, the world is waiting for season two. So, you know, fingers crossed, man, I'm, I'm waiting like everybody else, man. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm waiting for season two as well. You know, I, I already missed those taco trucks outside that uh, arena. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm mean, at the temple, right? You know? Yeah, I'm waiting for that. I missed the bar. I missed everything. So I'm just waiting <laughs> Wherever season two is here. <laughs> so, right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I think I'm way waiting for a season two just because of how Lucha Underground exploded. What was it like, I think, because I, I thought Lucha Underground was so cool just for the fact that we got to see AAA guys, but I also like that they brought in so many SoCal guys to kind of mix in with there. Was that a – did you think that that was something unique, that, you know, they took the talent from SoCal – and they said, you know, we're going to give you guys some time to shine, and we're going to put you with these AAA guys, and we're going to see how you guys kind of mesh together. Right, right. I thought I thought that was absolutely, you know, I thought that was absolutely dope, man. That was real cool how they did that. Um, you know, especially considering the fact that, you know, honestly, in the wrestling world, I don't, I feel that the West Coast doesn't get a lot of love per se in terms of top tier talent um you know obviously there's a, there's a ton of more promotions and things like that on the east coast and you know all kind of stuff going on on the east coast but when you look at the west coast it's kind of like you know we have that stigma where we don't really get, you know the love that I, I feel that a lot of guys out here deserve so you know to have lucha underground feature a lot of socal talent and then mix them up with the triple a guys it's kind of like okay that's what made the show unique you know what i mean uh, the fact that they did that, and and of course the writing was 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 fantastic. You know, shout out to DJ Krista Joseph, and um, you know, and Chris Roach, and 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 everybody who everybody who you know put the show together. You know, they they you know they they hired an amazing group of talent, and you know they wrote in the ama- amazing angles and storylines for everybody, and they. They put together one little show, and um, you know, it per- what, what they put together, it portrayed on camera and it portrayed to the fans, and um, you know, it, it, it was really cool that a lot of the SoCal guys, like you said, got an opportunity um, to be showcased on television because without them, I mean, you really have just championship wrestling from Hollywood, and that's only going to reach so many people. So it was very cool for a lot of uh, my my bros <laughs> and myself to get that. Um, that national exposure. You know, I think I was at the show when you made your debut, and I wasn't a fan when Pentagon Jr. broke your arm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, I wasn't a big fan either. <laughs> but, at the, <laughs> but at the same time, but at at the same time when it happened, at least it was filmed, you know. So. <laughs> yeah. No, but I actually no, but I actually had wrestled a couple times before then. Um, before that match, I had did a singles with uh, Mel Morthis. Um I also was in a ten man battle royal. Um, with uh, Chavo, Pimpinella, uh Johnny Mundo, uh, Ricky Mandel was in there, um, the crew, uh, a couple other people. And um, I also was on the first tapings, and I actually wrestled the very first match in Lucha Underground yeah. history, and which I won <laughs> against yeah, uh, the boys. Yeah, and yeah. I was there, and I was 
tripping out because I never seen B Boy as a heel before, and I was like, oh shit. So B Boy is <laughs> the heel on there. Yeah, yeah, I was there the first show, and then I, I thought when I was going there, I, I was going to see Triple A guys, but um, right. I saw you and B Boy. Like, oh crap, you know that's cool, you know. <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. no. It was, yeah, oh man, I mean, you talk about pressure. It goes back to uh, my first gorilla match that I was talking about. I mean, you go, you know, you got, you got all these guys in the back, uh, you know, that just, you know, just want want to see what it's gonna look like, you know, in the back on the monitor on 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 camera. Um, you got all the fans who are there in excitement and anticipation. You know, you got the producers who are there who are, you know, it was like all eyes were on us. And obviously anytime you step in a ring um, in Lucha Underground, all eyes are on you. But, I mean, we're talking about the very first match ever. <laughs> Everybody was yeah. glued to that ring, and it was so hot out there because, you know, oh, you, could yeah, just, it was terrible. you could just yeah. sit. <laughs> yeah. You could just sit, uh, you know, the the pressure of, you know, just everybody watching you and watching your performance and um, really just, you know, it was one of those things where it was very uh, nerve-wracking and nail-biting. But uh, we went out there, and I, I feel like we had a, a very good match, and um, it was a fun experience. And um, no matter how far Lucha Underground goes, I can always say that I wrestled and won the first match in the history of the company. So <laughs> Yeah, that, I was there that That's a I good accomplishment to have. Yeah, I was there that weekend when the first tape and I was, and then after that Sunday show, I was thinking Skids has to come here one of these days. Skids has right. to come here, and then when I got, when I brought Skids finally, he was like, then he got hooked on it, you know. Well, you saw guys like Arrow Star and them for the first time, and Skids right. got into it, so I was like, yeah. <laughs> right, no, you know, I mean, Skids. it just, it, I mean, <laughs> it, it just the way that the matches were set up and the storylines and the build, everything just got better and better from. From the first tape Man, all I have to say, the ending, the last episode of Lucha Underground was crazy. The last episode awesome, was like nuts. Awesome Lucha. Like, yeah, that yeah, that was Lucha. nuts. And plus, like the last episode when like everybody's leaving, and you see like that question mark. Does that mean right, my studio? Never know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you never know what's going to happen in Lucha Underground, man. They did a good job of keeping the talent fresh, rotating the talent, um, and bringing in um, different faces uh, from week to week. And um, it was just a, an awesome job, you know, from the producers and, uh, you know, everybody who put on the show. I mean, it was an awesome job, you know. So, um, you know, I, I, I can expect going forward um, if and when um, a season two is announced. Uh, it's going to be nothing short of the exact same um, dynamic and formula that uh, that season one had, for sure. Yeah, it's it's crazy because you um you mentioned Chavo Guerrero, uh, October thirtieth at FCW, mm-hmm. Famous B versus Chavo Guerrero versus Big Duke versus B Boy for the FCW Heavyweight Championship, and you're in another main event. You're holding it down this uh, <laughs> here at the end of this year. I'm loving it. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, uh, I'm loving it too. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, another main event, um, and this time it is for a championship, the FCW championship, down in San Diego. Um, shout out, Gus. What's up, Gus? Um, yeah, so man, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it as well. I mean, you know, stepping in the ring for the first time against Chavo Guerrero Jr., a Guerrero, you know, a, a very well tradition very well respected family um in which obviously i have a great deal of amount of respect for and you know everything that chavo has accomplished in his career as well as his uncle eddie who is definitely by far one of my top favorite wrestlers of all time um you know to be in the ring with him and then the likes of uh b-boy who's the current champion and then big duke who is uh uh, the other challenger in this match is going to be a very uh, fun match and a very interesting match. You know, it has so many different dynamics, and um, you know, it's 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 going to be awesome. But um, you know, my fights are set on that FCW championship, so you know, I'm even though it's going to be an honor to step in the ring with Chavo, it's going to be an honor even more so to take that title home with me that night. Yeah, it's crazy because, you know, me and Oscar, we hear so much about FCW, but, you know, yeah. we're obviously down here in L.A., and, you know, we're usually working on Fridays, so it's, like, hard for us, like, to get down there. We want to catch one of those shows one day because uh, I see it's a lot of, you know, huge talent out there. You know, you got Brian Cage out there. 
You know, you got Eli Everfly. You got up and coming guys like Danny Limelight there. Uh, the list goes on. Paul, uh, Paul London's gonna be on the show as well. Yeah, Paul London's there. Um, uh, I have the uh, the uh, list of guys that are gonna be there. Also, you got um, Douglas. Uh, Douglas James. Yeah, Douglas James. Douglas James is gonna be there. Uh, see, like for those that you know know about SoCal talent, like these guys are very talented. You know, you were tornadoes there. Sway Thompson. You know, uh, you even got um, Adam Thorston there. You know, like P.P. Ray. Right. I mean, I, like so SoCal crazy. Like Vernon. That in case you guys don't know who that is, that's uh, Yuma. Uh, and uh, good time, you know, like, gee, like, this is ridiculous. This card is ridiculous, like. Right, stacked, stacked. Yeah. And even Sage is on the, on the card. I think she's the only girl I see that's on the card. Yeah, yeah, I guess I've seen her wrestle uh, Joey Ryan uh, on the show. I mean, I wasn't there at the show, but I they filmed it on YouTube, and they had a match on on, on there, so. Right. Maybe yeah. a couple shows ago. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, folks, uh, if you're in the San Diego area, be sure to go show some support. FCW going down main event. You got Famous B, Chavo Guerrero Jr., Big Duke, and also you got my boy B Boy. Um, make sure, folks, you guys uh, go show some love. Um, I'm gonna pass it on to my boy. Uh, Tom, uh, as we uh, ask our last questions, because we got Ray's next here on AWS Week. So uh, I'm going to let uh, Tom go ahead and ask his last question. Yeah, my final question for you is, obviously, anyone who's seen me knows you're a high flyer. That's how you've always been. And nowadays, there's so many high flyers out there, so many talented guys out there. What are you trying to do to kind of keep yourself fresh, kind of keep yourself in the mix and not, you know, kind of get lost just because there's so many talented high flyers out there? Right. Well, uh, the the key is to just be yourself, you know. I mean, I'm always in touch with with who I am, you know. I feel that when you focus on other individuals or other talent, you kind of get um, – you know, you could get easily sidetracked. It's very important to just focus on you, focus on what brought you to the dance. Um, you know, keep a tight circle, a tight circle of people who believe in you since day one, um, because you always need that outside feedback, that outside encouragement. And um, just to, con- you know, my thing is to continue to be myself. There's only one famous B, you know. I'm not going to be duplicated or imitated, even though, you know, even though people may try. But, I mean, there's only one famous piece. So I stick, I stay in my lane. I stick to what I know. I stick to what I'm com- comfortable with. Um, I'm very confident in my in-ring ability and all my talents. And, um, you know, I just continue to keep the ball rolling. And, um, you know, I give back to the business. You know, I stay professional. I stay humble. And then, and that's how you keep the ball rolling. That's how you keep your wrestling blessings coming. So, um, uh, you know, I've been around the block. Um, I feel like at this stage of the game, you know, I, I, I'm very well, you know, experienced, and I definitely know what I'm doing. And um, I just keep to uh, what's got me to the dance and just stick to the formula and just keep it going. And I just have fun with wrestling. I enjoy my time in the ring. I enjoy my time training other students. Um, I enjoy my time just managing um the Santino Brothers shows and things like that, and um, and I'm having fun. So you know, <laughs> that that's I like how I that. do that's it. That's a very solid answer. You know, I think I, I think like you said, too many people sometimes trying to imitate or try to be somebody else. But I like that. It's a very humble answer, and you know, that's that's good. It's it's separation, and it's uh, it's definitely I think gonna definitely keep you in the mix for for a long time. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I look forward to all my um, future endeavors and all my current endeavors as well. And, um, you know, it, wrestling is my passion. Um, you know, I eat, sleep, and breathe a business. And, you know, I won't be going anywhere anytime soon. So <laughs> this is to, for year, to years to come. 
Definitely, definitely. Uh, B, man, we want to thank you for taking your time out to come on Wrestling Has Radio. I know we've been bugging you for a while, and you finally came on. And I just want to say we appreciate it, <laughs> man. Oh, it's not a problem, guys. Um, I appreciate you guys having me. Um, uh, love the talk, love the chat, and uh, we definitely got to do it again sometime soon. Oh yeah, we'll definitely. Do it again. Uh, we'll, we'll hit you up. <laughs> we got to give you uh, a Wrestling Has T-shirt uh, so next time we see you. Uh, before we uh, let you go, you want to give away your uh, social medias uh, before we um, uh, before we uh, ha- have you go. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you can reach me via email for booking inquiries at famousb at santinobros dot net. Um, you can also find me on Twitter. Uh, famousb twenty three is my handle. Uh, that's also my handle on um, YouTube, uh, where you can catch a lot of um, good matches that I've done. Um, a lot of uh, my old school matches and things like that. If you want to get up to date or familiarize yourself with my in ring work. Uh, just search Famous B23 on YouTube. I have a lot of great footage there. Um, uh, you can also check me out on Facebook. Uh, check out my uh, the official Famous B fan page. And um, and Google is a very powerful thing. So <laughs> Famous B on Google, you know, is going to pretty much uh, pull up a lot of uh, things that I've done, a lot of images and things like that, and link you directly to um, a lot of my social media sites. So check me out on there. You can also check me out on Instagram, uh, Famous B underscore 23. So that's how you find me. Definitely, definitely. Well, thanks again, B, and uh, we'll see you soon, man. Cool, man. Thanks for having me, man. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, brother. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, that was Famous B. We have Race coming up next. Real quick, let's take a quick small break, and we'll be right back with these messages. Good afternoon, this is England's Zack Sabre Jr., and when I'm not drinking tea and hanging out with the Queen, I am always listening to Wrestling Heads Radio. Cheerio. Hello, friends. This is Matt Seidel. You are using your brain and listening to Wrestling Heads. Respect. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to WH Radio. And before we call Rays, I have one thing to say. All you have to do is boldly. Okay, <laughs> Bo Dallas mixed with Rays. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's call Rays up right now. I'm sure she believes. Just like everybody else. I, I dare you to ask her that. I dare you to ask her that. <laughs> oh, jeez. She's a huge oh. girl too, so I know she she could probably power ball me. <laughs> Hold on. It says she felt or was not asked. Okay, let me try this again. One more time. Talk, talk radio want to be bummy tonight. Don't uh, tell not. me they're going to fuck this shit up now. Very <laughs> blog talk. Clap, 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 clap. See, it was fine. Seven, was, six, uh, zero. It was fine on Monday. It didn't piss me off on Monday. But hopefully they don't start anything stupid now. Eight, four, five, oh. No kidding, have a number out there. Come on. Well, since we won't have any awkward pauses, remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can always find us at Twitter at Wrestling Head. There you go. Come see you soon. Hello. Hello. Rays. Yeah. What's going on? It's just Skits and Oscar and Tom, Wrestling Heads. You're alive. What's going on? Oh, we're live already. Okay, hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah, we just um, got finished with Famous B, so we got you on now next to finish off AWS week. It's been a crazy week here on WH Radio, and uh, we uh, have the best for the last. Uh, Miss Rays, how you been? Um, well, I've been better, but I've been worse, so we'll, we'll call it a wash. I'm doing okay. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, 
I know you got a lot on your plate coming up, and you also had a uh, you just got finished uh, with the the uh, past weekend, I believe it was like a cup. You're um, you're part of it was, uh, with uh, like Detura and oh, the some other ladies. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you, uh, I know you've been doing big things. Uh, uh, let's talk about Santino's real quick, because so, uh, you have uh, Santino's coming up. You'll be in a submission uh, championship matchup against BC Killer, and let's hope you take the title. Because uh, me and Oscar feel like BC shouldn't have that title, and um, we saw what happened <laughs> at the last Santino show, um, where uh, you know BC Killer basically uh, and his and his crew basically cheated, uh, in in uh, the uh, uh, match up there. And now we have you and Killer going at it at the next show on September 25th. Uh, talk to us about uh, uh, the uh, uh, match up here. Yeah, so that's an interesting match. Um, not one I quite expected. I would, I, I've gone against BC Killer in the past, and at Santino Brothers, he is the man that has defeated me. So uh, coming up to do this championship match for the submissions title is actually a shock, honestly. Um, but it's a shock, and it's an occasion that I hope to rise to to go against BC Killer. I've been working on the uh, submissions with Los Luces, so hopefully those skills get pulled out and help me in the end. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, because for those that don't know what happened at the last Santino show, um, Ray's and Tyler Bateman tagged up against... Uh, uh, it was uh, Robbie and Hawk. yeah Robbie Phoenix, Robbie Phoenix and, and yeah and Hoss Hawk and somehow I believe BC Killer got involved and all hell kind of broke loose from there and uh, Sarge and uh, and BC Killer basically had their match and it was just all hell broke loose in, in that match and so this is basically uh, from what happened at that Santino show is coming on to here so Ray's getting. Uh, a shot at this title, and uh, let's hope uh, she becomes uh, the submission champion. And when you win, because I know you're gonna win, you <laughs> that will make you the first um, woman to hold that title. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Um, if uh, if I do, I would. In fact, if I win anything at Santino's, I think I would actually be the first woman to hold any championship at Santino's. Um, the submissions belt, though it's fairly new, I think it holds a lot of weight because it shows that you have a strong wrestling game, that your grappling game is on and your submission game is on. So, I don't know. I think this is really going to test me, and I am going to bring it to BC Killer. So, I hope he's ready. I'm trying. I'm trying my hardest to be ready. I hope he's ready too. Definitely. For for all the folks um, out here in the SoCal area, be sure to go so so love uh, Friday, September twenty fifth uh, at eight thirty p.m. Uh, also on the card, just letting everybody know, Tyler Bateman and Eli Everfly, they're they're going to be uh, having a matchup, uh, and uh, I believe Trina Michaels is going to be there too. So for yep. the guys, if they want to see some eye candy, go for it. Uh, and also the contract <laughs> signing for Chaos, uh, and um, Brian Kendrick is happening that night too. So be sure to go show some love there at Santino Bros. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the uh, next question on to Oscar. Go for it. Yeah, um, my next question relates to AWS. But uh, before I ask you that question, wait, 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 wait. Do I get a question? I want to ask a question. Okay, go for it. Why do you guys post your time in Eastern time, yo? Like, seriously. Hey, I have to do well, the gas conversion. I don't know what time Eastern time is. I'm in California. Because, Come on. Well, that's the, question. the person that does our <laughs> coming from I can East that. Coast guy. This is coming from the East Coast that. guy. No offense to the West Coast. I have much love to the West Coast. But most people know Eastern time as opposed to West Coast time. 
It's Who knows? Who? Where? Because if you ask people in California, they'll say Eastern Time. Wait, what? I can answer that question, <laughs> though. The guy that does our banners, he's from Canada. So he's used to, like, the East Coast time, I guess. And I, like, I already told him. I was like, Ray's wants us to put Pacific Time when we have somebody from SoCal so they can know the times, you know? So, 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 uh... True. It's true. Come on. If you have people from SoCal on your show, then a lot of SoCal people, are, California people are going to want to hear them, and they don't want to do the map conversion. So next time, we should have a banner, and that raised right there in the background. Let's have some kind of like, I don't know, you take your picture of the Freddy Krueger one, look like you just killed somebody, and we'll put the West Coast <laughs> time on there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, see? See, that's a, plan, that's a banner I just gave you guys an idea of right there, you see? <laughs> yep. But uh, but anyways, now I'm going to ask you my question. Um, but before I ask you my question, please be BC Killer for that submission title. <laughs> so, um, Man, yeah, I'm going to try, dude. You don't even know. This guy's so big and he's so burly. I know. But, you, know, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a small guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but anyways, um... I, I see. Uh, I know. I know. I know. We we talked about this at the Wrestling Guys podcast. Shout out to David, by the way. Um, about AWS. Oh, uh, no, Bart, Bart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Bart uh, did mention that this is not going to be the last AWS show. It's going to be the last show in a, for a while. So he did he did mention that it will come back, and um, we're happy to say that. I remember we were at the Wrestling Guys, so you were concerned, but. Yeah. Now it came out the bar to mouth. It's gonna come back, but I see in the in, on next weekend show you're gonna be in a tag match. Um, you're actually, I think I, I think you're teaming up with Katana, if I'm not mistaken. Oh uh, no no no! I'm teaming no. up with uh, Lena Von Dutch. Oh Lena Von Dutch. Okay okay, I got confused now. And so the Toro is gonna be teaming up with uh, with Katana. Katana. And, yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, what you're looking for in that match, that tag team match? Uh, yourself and Leah against those two. What am I? What? I'm sorry. What are you looking for coming up to this match in this uh, final AWS show for the year? Uh, what I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm looking to go in there and be an ass kicker. Um, I'm actually really excited to work with uh, Leah. I've She's been to AWS once while I've been there. And yeah. she had a great showing, and I think putting me and her on one side that that may that may very well be a recipe for destruction there for Katana and for Deterra. Yeah, yeah, I remember last time Leah was there, uh, they were chanting Candice because supposedly she looks like Candice LeRae, which you They're destroyed tripping. her by the way that one show. So I was there when you I saw you destroyed her. <laughs> so. um yeah, and maybe we'll hear more Candace chants again, and uh, hopefully this time I uh, I will remember you bringing uh, Diet Coke this time because uh, I'm guys yeah, don't even know she wanted me to bring Diet Coke to so that Santino show. My ass forgot, so um, hopefully at AWS I will remember and I'll get you some Diet Coke. I think uh, I think another thing besides looking forward to Diet Coke is I'm gonna look forward to. Uh, Actually, squaring off with Detour a little bit because I know she has a lot of that lucha flavor. And like I said, I've been training with Los Lucha, so I want to yeah. see how we're off nowadays. But also, I'm also looking to uh, suplex the hell out of people because uh, I can. You've been watching. I want to ask Ray, have you been watching some Brock Lesnar videos and uh, <laughs> seeing uh, <laughs> what he's been doing? Uh, you probably can take some of uh, his uh, notes there. Oh no! Like, uh, not not even no disrespect to him. Um, I've actually been rushing up on a bunch of different suplexes, watching a bunch of the uh, Japanese female wrestling. Uh, so hopefully I get to try some of those out this weekend at Premier in mine and Kikyo's match against Nicole Savoy and Kimura. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be fun. Yeah. So um, maybe we'll hear some yelling out like uh, what Brock Lesnar said, Suplex City, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll try to add one in there just for you. Okay. okay. You said so. 
right. Uh, <laughs> let me pass to our Mr. East Coast over here, Mr. New York Yankee, uh, Mr. Thomas. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, obviously, I think you've had a big 2015. Even just in AWS, you know, you faced Francisco. You got a shot at the AWS World Title game to Willie Mack in the AWS uh, Quintessential Pro Joint Show. You you defeated Candice LeRae. Talk about what 2015 has been for you career-wise, because I think it's been your biggest year yet. <laughs> Honestly, 2015 has been ridiculous beyond what I could have imagined. And I, I got to put this out there. So last night I was sitting there and I was archiving through all my matches because I have everything on my Google Calendar. Um, technically, I've only been wrestling 20 months. That's, that's not even two years yet. So for 2015 to be the year that it has been, if at AWS, at Santino Brothers, being able to go to Rockstar Pro Wrestling, be able to do the Gathering of the Juggalos for Juggalo Championship Wrestling, for all the opportunities I've had, is mind-blowing to me. And honestly, matches against people like Willie Mack or Candice LeRae, and especially uh, the match recently I had against Tito, are those things I feel that really push me to my limits. And at the end, you know, it's one of those, I'm either going to rise to the occasion or I'm going to fail, and I feel so fortunate to have been in there with the people I have that make me rise to the occasion because these are the type of people that aren't cutting me any slack. They're not, you know, giving me any leeway. i I got to keep up because these are, honestly, some of the best people we have here in SoCal. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt. And do you now see that now that you can kind of look back, we're getting toward the end of the year, and obviously there's still a lot of 2015 left, but when you look back, are you going to say, wow, I, I stepped up to the plate, and now you get more confidence, or is it just going to push you to just keep going and going and saying, you know what, I'm going to top 2015 with 2016 and so on? <laughs> I think, on it, honestly, this was my um, thought after I had my match with Tito recently was that that just drives me to make sure I get to my trainings, to make sure I'm hitting the gym, to make sure that I'm working on my cardio, that I'm working on my weightlifting so I can lift up people, so I can toss people, so I could, you know, go to luchas, so I could expand my mindset, to expand the way I think about wrestling these people just drive me harder and for me that's really difficult to say because I, I think I've said this before I feel very old in wrestling like I'm older than a lot of people so when I look at wrestling I think well I never know how long I'm going to be here you know my injuries have been plenty in 20 months um, but things like the matches I've had recently just honestly they just drive me and it's ridiculous because at some given point, you want to think, well, no, maybe you ought to slow down. Your ribs are hurting. You can hardly get out of bed today. You know, it hurts to turn over in bed. It hurts to take a big right step. But I still get up. I still go to the gym. I still hit the trainings and go as hard as I can for as long as I can in my matches at the trainings, at the gym, you know, everything I could do. So it all just, it's fueling me and, I don't know what 2016 is going to bring, because you never know what the future is going to bring, but hopefully hopefully, good stuff, honestly. I'm looking forward to trying to get out and trying to travel a little bit more, and I'm very, very blessed to have some really good people on my side that are pulling for me, and they're trying to help me out as well. Very awesome, very awesome to hear. All right, Skip, I know you want yeah. to talk, but I'll pass it back to you. Well, my my next question is, uh, talk to us about the experience of you, uh, uh, you know, traveling outside of SoCal this year. <laughs> oh goodness, um, I know I've I know there's a couple places I've gone. I know I recently debuted for Freak Show. We did stuff in Las Vegas, um, 3PW in Las Vegas. But honestly, one of the best places I went to recently was Rockstar Pro Wrestling in Dayton, Ohio, where I had a match against Lucisto. 
And for me, that experience was completely, I want to use the word humbling. I'm not sure that's the right word that I want to use, but it, it kind of it kind of is very humbling to go somewhere like Rockstar Pro Wrestling and have people already know who you are and have have people know your name. That to have people that drove from you know adjacent states to come see you, uh, that was honestly that was like a mind blowing experience. And I had a great match with Lefisto. We I got the Please Come Back chant, which was mind blowing to me. That was the first time I ever got that. And, of course, I wrecked, like, a tiny girl at the end with the Soul Eater Spear. So that just made it even better. And and I met some people that know uh, Chaos and Jezebel and all that that were out there in Ohio. So that it's a small world, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, me, me, me as a fan of yours, I'm definitely proud of you, you know. You're, you're like... Me and Oscar always talk, you know, about different wrestlers out here in SoCal, and your name is one of the names that we mentioned a lot that's had one hell of a uh, 2015. And I have not mentioned this to no SoCal wrestler yet because I'm, I, like, I'm, like, real cool with numerous folks, but we plan on doing, like, a top 25 SoCal wrestlers of the year. So, and... You're definitely on that list, uh, so uh, just Thank throw you. it out there. Thank you. I honestly like. I I feel like this year is mind blowing, and honestly, I want to attribute most all of it to Santino Brothers Wrestling and the training I've gotten there between Chaos, between Los Luchas. Um, I think you know Santino Brothers really helped me out a lot. I mean, they're my training facility. They're the people that put me out there. They're the people that have helped, you know, push me. And you, you got people like Los Luchas that have me doing stuff that's ridiculous that I would never have done. But it's with their help and it's with their training that I feel like I've been able to grow and expand. And Honestly, I'm, I'm just shocked and I'm grateful. Speaking of Santino's, uh, on October the 10th, it doesn't really have... Uh, who you're gonna go against? I d- I only see two women on the card so far, and that's you and Hudson Envy. Is, do you think there's a possibility maybe they book you guys going against each other at on that show? I don't know if you can hear that deep sigh I just gave, but me and Hudson have gone against each other once in a three way with Sage, and that was great um, because everybody knows she. My best friend, she's you know my other half, and I have, but we have no problem beating each other up when it comes time. I, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not afraid to wrestle her, but I'm really hope that isn't the match because I'd much rather be on her side and be with her as Raisin Envy than be against her because I think that as a tag team me and her would have a lot to offer not just against girls but against guys as well yeah because I'm looking on here and as as everybody knows you know the main event is already announced you know you got Hudson you got Tyler Bateman you got yourself Famous B uh, you got uh, Brody King Eli and Tito like are like the only faces I see that's on the poster at the moment. So, if you had to choose someone, you know, out of those folks I just named, like who would be the person you would like to face at uh, the show? That's a tough one. Um, I honestly I couldn't tell you. I mean, but but if you think about it, that's just the people that are on the. Flyers. I'm sure there's going to be a whole lot more other Santinos at that show. Honestly, I have I have my hit list of people that I want to wrestle before this year's out. So I would love to wrestle like a Peter Avalon or Jake Cabrera. Obviously not Joey because he has his match set for that. So if I could choose, why not Brody King? Because he yelled out he wants better competition. So why not give it to him? Because you know he did <laughs> yell out better competition. So. You know, he's a monster, but, uh, you know. He is a monster. 
He's a he's a definite monster. Honestly, honestly, I would really love to wrestle Tyler Bateman. But oh, interesting. We're, we're tagging right now. We're right now. Show, you know. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I remember we actually talked stuff. about this. We actually talked about this like a while back, and you said you wanted it to happen, and we tweeted it out to different promoters, and it still hasn't happened. So that definitely needs to happen before the. I think Skip, you need to just get fuck the shit out of the Santino's. Uh, um, <laughs> right. you know, talk, everybody's listening. Like, talk to scary. Famous B. Famous B says he he's working uh, behind the scenes. Hey, so fuck Famous shit out B's the guy. Famous, uh, Famous <laughs> B. Hey, bug him too, you know. And anybody's listening, bug Famous B then. <laughs> huh. Wait, look what his phone he gets fifty four notifications. What the fuck? <laughs> Thanks to I have I have with a uh, Brody King though. Um, he is definitely a monster <laughs> in the ring at training all the time. Brody is he's a beast. Uh, I. We've been in training matches before at Santino's. I've I've squared off with him in the ring, and he he's a beast. I I wouldn't put. <laughs> oh, that's almost like going against BC Killer, <laughs> except oh, for <laughs> except for much taller. So when he throws me, I have a lot farther way to fall before I hit the ground. <laughs> yeah, he's a big boy. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I feel like I'm yeah, ninja. I, I, I would definitely watch that. Too. Too. <laughs> but anyways. Go ahead, uh, but but Watch out for Brody King in the upcoming year. Believe me. He's going to, he's he's only going to get more Jack and he's only going to get more beastial. So. Woo. Yeah. 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 On my well, side. I agree with you with that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was funny that how he, how he got into uh, Deshaun's two cents face at the last show. That was funny, though. So. <laughs> but anyways, um, my next question I want to ask you, which I tweeted to you, I heard a rumor about you, and uh, I'm going to ask you about this rumor I heard. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How many rumors have you heard about me? Uh, this is the only one. I didn't hear nothing about you're going to WWE or TNA, none of that stuff, but this is like the only one I heard. So okay, good, because I'm not going to WWE or TNA. <laughs> I know that. I know that. Even if I hear that rumor, you're like, okay, I got to hear more proof about that. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, the okay. rumor is that it relates to uh, IWL, actually. And I know you're going to be there um, October 3rd. Uh, I'm actually going to – I'm planning to head out there, too. And, and no, I won't be watching that WWE uh, Brock Lesnar and Madison Square thing, Garden thing. So I can wait. It's not like I can ask Dick Luna, hey, wait for me and – Start the show late. No, I can't do that. <laughs> but uh, Brock Lesnar could wait for me. All right. <laughs> but um, my question is that uh, rumor had it that you know it's been a while since you've been you and Tyler have been in IWL. You know, I, I know you worked with them in the past you, when you were a manager. Uh, you know, this is going to be actually the first time you're going to be wrestling. But the rumor is that. Uh, the reason why you and Tyler wasn't booked there because you guys had issues with uh, Vic Luna. Is that any truth to that? No. There's no, no. truth to that. No beef? Um, nothing I actually, that. I actually... No, no, no. With me or me or Tyler with Vic Luna, no, there's absolutely no beef there. Um, me and Vic actually share the same birthday, and we always message each other on our birthdays, say hi to each other, you know, just check in, see how's it going. Uh, we have mutual friends. We've been to parties where we're there. No, Vic, Vic, I love. Vic's a cool guy. Yeah. Um, but I have actually wrestled for IWL before in a singles capacity. Um, they were actually the first people where I ever had a singles match, and it was against Chris Evans. Oh, wait a minute. That was in the Santinos, right? When they had shows in Santinos, right? No, no, no. It was... No, it was back in Chino Hills. It was the day that the Mayan calendar was ending and everybody thought the world was going to end. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah that now. was okay. my very first single. Yeah, and I, I wasn't the one. At all. That's the one my buddy was trying to bug me to go, but the thing was, was in Chino and I worked in Long Beach. I was like, shit, I'm going to make it there, you know, because <laughs> all that traffic, you know. So, right. yeah, I remember. No, yeah. no. Me and uh, me and Vic are cool. Tyler and Vic, to my knowledge, are cool. Uh, 
I've never had any heat with Vic ever. Um, we, but it is true. Like there was for the longest time, IWL was kind of like our home, and we were there every month after month. Even yeah. when they were back at the uh, marketplace in Anaheim, we were there. Yeah. Um, but there was a series of unfortunate events that led to us not working there for the longest time, and then it was it wasn't anything between us and Vic. Um, but you know, time passes, and it's Vic's show. Vic doesn't want us there, then Vic doesn't want us there. If someone else doesn't want us there that's in the office, then they don't want us there, and that's fine. But I feel actually really grateful to be going back to IWL because, you know, whether they know it or not, they were one of the first people I feel to ever give me a chance to ever put some faith in me, and that means a lot to me. In wrestling, I think that means a lot when someone wants to put their faith in you. Um so I'm more than ecstatic to be going back to IWL, and I hope to give a great showing. I'll be teaming up with uh, Laura James in a tag capacity. So I just want to go out yeah. there, and I want to tear it up, and I want to show the fans that, you know. Laura James is a hey. beast, by the way, too. This, yeah. Gee, oh, she's Skits such a favorite. Beast. I was going to say that. That's Skits' favorite right there. She's, she's such a beast, favorites. and that makes me that makes me so happy to tag with her because she has that same aggression that I have to just want to go out there and wreck, <laughs> wreck stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, she's doing big things, too. Like, I saw pictures that she's um, she's in Global Force. I'm like, oh, shit, she's doing Global Force wrestling. So, Oh, crap. Yeah. I, I have no idea. I know she's doing yeah. a Q-Pro show in Reno. I didn't know when she yeah. Global Force. So then, yeah, she, damn, yeah, know, she, for her. Yeah, I know. She's been uh, doing... Things too, and uh, I saw pictures of her and Joey Ryan at Global Force. Global, uh, Joey Ryan's in the tag team with Kenny King. They're like, um, I don't want to say like male strippers, but those dudes that wear bow ties in their necks, you know, yeah. whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, they're doing that kind of gimmick thing. So, and yeah, I, I saw Laura in a three way against. Um, I think Gallo she was part of the uh, tournament. I think she was part yeah. of the tournament yeah. for the women's title. Yeah, but yeah. Was, I saw pictures also in a kind of three way with her, her and Winter and um, Amber oh. Gallows. Yeah, they're all in, her th- in the three way. So, I mean, that's, that's, awesome. that's good. That was pretty, yeah, that was awesome for her. But uh, now you're going to be teaming up with her. I mean, it's good to see more women in IWL cause they, because uh, I've been to the last few shows and uh, Kamara was the only uh, female there the last few shows I went. And, and now we get to see more women. That's pretty cool. So. I mean, I yeah. have to talk to them. Yeah, yeah. So for I, sure. I'm, I'm planning to be there. We're just gonna wreck. We're just gonna wreck. Yeah. So I'm planning to be there. I'm. I'm. I, like I said, I have the WWE Network. I could watch the the freaking Madison Square Garden show anytime I want. So I could watch that later. Maybe after the show I wanna... because IWL ends early. So <laughs> that's how. how yeah. I I heard anybody on SoCal on October third. To get to IWL because that's their that's their New Era show. That's basically IWL's like WrestleMania. They're gonna pull out all the stuff. Right? And so far there's eight matches announced. Yeah, I Peter believe. Yeah. Yeah. Versus Ray Rosas for the I, IWL title. Yep. Uh, hey, the Ninja there's Ninja Turtles will Tyler be there. Versus D-Boy. Uh, ah, yes, the Ninja Turtles will be there. <laughs> Tyler versus D Boy versus Ryan Kidd. I believe uh, Eric Cross versus Paul London. I don't oh, know who the Hive yeah, is. Yeah, They're part you're of the right. B Boy versus Tyler Bateman. Versus Ryan Kidd. It's a three way. Yeah, Ryan Kidd. Oh, I, I Ryan see Kidd Ryan Kidd has Kidd Yes, yeah, yeah uh, Skits and Ryan Kidd had history. Um, I remember Ryan Kidd took your glasses. So, yeah, that was messed up. But, yeah, you guys had history. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I forgot but, about that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll let you know right now. Um, if the doctor aren't playing, I'm there. <clears throat> nice. Well, the Dodgers nice. are going to go into the World I mean, I mean, not World Series, but the playoffs. But, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, they're on the road that that day. Ah, <laughs> uh, yep. So, yeah, but, uh, hopefully you can... Hopefully get out to so, IWL tonight, and I will, I will be there. I will be coming in from another show, so I'm going to be a little tired, so make sure you bring me a Diet Coke. <laughs> I'm gonna need that caffeine. So that's like I'll, another one. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and ask a question. Diet Coke, IWL Diet Coke for Rays. <laughs> I have yes. a question yes. for Rays because nobody has asked the question yet. What's with Rays and Diet Coke? 
Um, they should sponsor me, honestly. <laughs> They're my I favorite thing now. I can see now. Ray, she's going to come in with Diet Coke, like Stone Cold style. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that happening now. I'm three in the pack to Diet Coke, brother. <laughs> oh, no, better yet, she comes with a truck and <laughs> she freaking has a freaking hose and starts shooting everybody with Diet Coke. I can see that happening now. <laughs> with Austin with a freaking beer and shit. <laughs> I'll do it. Don't cut me. Oh, yeah. Um, see? Uh, Tom, go ahead uh, with the next question, uh, bro. Yeah, you know, before you mentioned, obviously, your other half, Hudson Envy, and she's doing awesome things over in stardom currently. And, of course, stardom in October is going to be coming to California. So my question is, is that something maybe you're thinking about possibly in the future, going over to Japan and working for stardom? Is that a possibility that... Is kind of in the back of your mind. Um, I think travel is always in the back of my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if stardom would necessarily be on my plate. Um, I think stardom is a very, very good promotion, but I don't know. I feel like I'm not sure if I would be an exact fit for them. I know there's a lot of promotions in Japan, and especially one that just started up the seedling that was by uh, Nanae Takahashi. Like, that one actually, uh, it really caught my attention because it's a startup, and I'm looking at the girls that they're using, and that seems like something, like, might be more of where I can make a fit in. Um, There's a lot of people out there, and honestly... Though Japan would be on one of the places where I definitely would want to go, I'm kind of looking down towards Mexico recently, and I honestly blame Los Lucha's training because of that. Um, I've gotten really into the uh, the Lucha style and the ability to do things that I haven't done before. So, I don't know. Travel's on my mind, and uh, hopefully 2016 can bring a lot more of that. Definitely, and, you know, I I, I mentioned Japan because I like watching a lot of the American women go over to Japan ever since I started watching Joshi Wrestling, and I like seeing, uh, I I feel like the Japanese crowd always enjoys seeing a lot of the Americans come in because they're just so, like, enthralled with them, so I think it's a good fit, and I think, this is me personally, I think Joshi Wrestling is so underlooked by so many people, you know, we talk about New Japan all the time, but I don't feel like uh, Joshi mm-hmm. Wrestling has a lot of love on here. Well, I I feel almost, not almost, I guess almost the opposite, because honestly, Joshi Wrestling was my first big, big experience with female wrestling when I was managing and I started looking more and more into female wrestling. My major influences were like Kana. Ayumi, uh, Hiro- uh, Hiro- <laughs> Hiroyo Matsumoto, Princess of you know, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of really great Joshi girls, and I love what they do, um, Kana especially, and big props to her with her recent signing to, um, NXT, what she's doing, and there's so much good Joshi wrestling out there that, it, it's a, it's a shame, honestly, that more people aren't watching it here in America, but I know, I understand that it's kind of, it's kind of a little bit harder for us to get it out of here, it's more elusive to find the matches, and definitely, you know, getting matches in real time, like, okay, if they're having this stardom show, you know, tomorrow, when are we actually going to get to see some matches from it over here, it's a little bit harder to catch up to. Yeah, I could, I could definitely agree with you on that. Did it, did it surprise you that kind of got signed by WWE? Obviously, she's one of the best, I, I think, female wrestlers out there, but WWE usually doesn't kind of go for Japanese women, so that did, did that uh, surprise you that you got signed? Well, yes and no, because if you think of back in the days, you know, the Jumping Bomb Angels, they had Bull over there. They've had, they've had a good presence back in the day, but it seemed like it fell off for a while. Um, 
honestly, uh, because I don't read dirt sheets, I don't read the websites or stuff like that, so it kind of did catch me by surprise because the first thing I heard was that Khan is going on a hiatus. And so that just kind of made me sad to my soul. I'm like, oh, I can't see any of her matches right now. You know, I don't know. And it was an indecisive amount of a hiatus. So I was like, I don't know when I'm going to see her stuff again. That's just really sad. Between her, between a Yumi retiring, between, you know, other girls that I like that have retired recently, it was a little disheartening. And then I, you know, I hear that she was at the NXT tapings and she was there watching, you know, attentively. And then I read that she's, signed and that's actually that's really exciting i think that's going to bring a lot of flavor to the division of the ladies division over there um and hopefully hopefully inspire a lot of the girls here in america because i in my opinion now they're getting a good multicultural spread so and i think that's very important for people to see you know not just guys to also see females but not just see females but see females of different different ethnicities to give people, more people kind of like to connect with, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I definitely see that same point, and I, I know I was definitely excited, and I know this is just me uh, hopeful wishing, but I, I was hoping that when she gets there, she uh, gives some of those girls a little, some stiff shots. I know she can't go, you know, what she did in uh, in, in Japan, but I'm hoping, you know, a couple, couple elbows, a couple of stiff kicks, but... That's just me hopeful wishing. I mean, if you want to talk about that, I believe the girls at NXT, meaning like Sasha Banks and Bayley, like they've been killing the game right now, and they're like letting these girls do what they want. They got on the main event in the next takeover. I see a lot of change coming in the WWE, in the WWE very soon. As soon as Triple H is fully in charge, it's going to be a whole new uh, story going on over there and a lot of new faces, maybe some folks that we see out here in SoCal, maybe uh, – end up over there in uh in Florida. Yeah. Um I I think there's definitely a lot of room for different flavors. I if we could see over there like maybe a good Latino Latina presence in the division, you know. Uh that would be nice because I I can't think of someone right now that's a Latino over there. Correct me if I'm wrong. I can't think of them. If you want to count the Bella Twins, nobody. <laughs> Rosa Mendes. <Hey. laughs> you know, get a good spread. Like I said, get a good ethnic spread. In my opinion, give the, give the girls that are coming up, even the little girls that aren't wrestling yet, you know, give them people to look up to. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Honestly, right now, if you're if you're on the indie circuit, like I am, like, you know, <laughs> wrestling is, then if you're a female, that I, I definitely believe NXT should try to be a goal of yours because the training over there seems to be far none right now. They have such great people like Sarah Del Rey, you know, showing them Sarah Del Rey is one of the best, if not, you know, the best female here in America. And to get training from her, that would be amazing. Even if you're just staying developmental and just get training from her and they get released. You had training from Sarah Delaray. Come on. Yeah. Speaking of NXT, another thing I like, how they bring in girls that are, like, already in the indies. And they just, you know, have a match with one of their girls, you know, just to get their experience, you know, to get their feet wet on TV, you know. Exactly. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. And that, honestly, I mean, bring it to to circle this back around to AWS. That's what I really love about AWS was that Bart was willing to bring in females that have gone places that are really established in wrestling, such as Lucisto, and bring them in or Melissa. You know, bring them in and let the girls that are here, the local girls, get a chance to work with these other females that are on like a completely different level. And that just that goes to help us. Honestly, that's such a benefit to us and. Knowing that Bart isn't going to be running for a while, you know, that kind of takes away some of that experience. And that's, it's sad. It's disheartening. But, you know, understanding Bart's decisions and he's running the show, so. Yeah. Um, I want to ask my last question before we let you go. Um, now, you know, that we know that the uh, last AWS show is coming up on the 26th. Uh, after that, what SoCal promotion do you think is going to be like uh uh, the the uh, promotion to work for, like, the top uh, company to 
to work for because me as a fan, I see Santino's stepping up big time to uh, you know get more folks to come over there and like work at their uh, shows. Definitely, um, I think Santino's will definitely be one to watch because you know we're moving out of the dojo, we're moving into that Southgate venue where Bart was running. And so that allows us, not only one, to bring in bigger crowds, but with bigger crowds, you could bring in different people. Um, as you can see, like, we've got Joey Ryan versus Brian Cage on the next one, Chaos versus Brian Kendrick, you know. I, I definitely believe that they're going to be stepping up their game and they're going to be one of the ones to fill that position and one of the ones to watch out for. Probably the other two that I would give definitely pop and they definitely watch these people is uh, FCW, Finest City Wrestling, down in San Diego. Yeah, you're also because... booked there, too, in October, right? No. I'm not booked there in October. I wish I was, but I'm not booked there in October. Um, IWL would be the other one that I'd say watch out for because I think Dick is definitely back on a roll, and he is going to do good things, I think, and which also is another reason why I'm extremely happy to be going back there, at least for this show. Um, but I really think that IWO will be stepping up their game as well. Definitely. Uh, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to see what happens. Uh, Ray's, uh, we want to uh, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, before we let you go, can you uh, throw out your Twitter and all your other uh, uh, Facebooks or whatever you got like that? Oh, for sure. Uh, well, on any social media, you can find me under the name Razor Pops. That's R-A-V-E-R-P-O-P-S. And I'm on pretty much all social media because I'm a social media whore. Um, but you can also, if you're looking to buy some merch and you're not around me, you could go by uh, RazorPops.com bigcartel.com and I've got my buttons and my photos up there. I'm getting ready to get some more shirts because I ran out too quick. <laughs> and uh, some other merch coming in. But definitely look me up on everything. Add me on everything. Just look for Rays or look for Ruby Rays or look for Razor Pop. You'll find me. I'm not hard to find. Yeah, you do need more, more merch because your shirt sells out quick just like the Bullet Clubs. So. <laughs> they sell out super yeah. quick. I don't even... I don't even have one of my shirts. Like, they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, um, uh, you well, know, before we let you go, Race, I want to ask you one thing. I, I, I just saw some pictures of you. I saw you, you got the Freddy Krueger look. I saw you wearing a Michael Meyer mask. What's next? Uh-huh. Jason, Chucky, uh, Pinhead. What is next? Because I know, I'm just asking because Halloween's just around the corner. I could tell you exactly what's next, but I'm not going to tell you. Okay. But I'll ask you this. Do you want to play a game? <laughs> no, no, no. I'll ask you this. Have the lambs stopped screaming yet? Oh, okay. I'm just saying, I Mariachi Lopez gave me... What you're talking about now. And I was him for Halloween. I will tag you in that Facebook uh, picture uh, later on tonight. <laughs> all, all I'm saying is, you know, Mariachi Loco gave it to me. He had the mill maniac. So, okay. if you see me at a Lucha show, I'm probably going to be dressed up as something horror. And my gear guy, Emmanuel Caros, is working hard <laughs> for me. So, All right. be on the lookout. Right. I know what you're talking about. So, All right. All right. I wish I was in the horror movie so I can guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe, maybe you should take a race to a Halloween Horror Nights to the Michael Meyer maze. So. Oh, I'd be stoked. I really want to go there. Yeah, yeah, it looks pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, look out! Look out for um, I've I've done a I've already drawn out uh three new gears, they're being made, and I have one that's coming up because I have a very very special booking coming up that I I can't announce yet, but it's coming up, and when you see it, it's going to be great. And then the horror gears will more start coming out more and more. You had the Mill Maniacos is going to be out more and more, especially at all the Lucha shows. So Lucha VIP or wherever else you're going to see me at a Lucha show, definitely be on the lookout. 
right. All Definitely. right. Uh, Raise again, we want to thank you for always coming on to talk some wrestling with us, and we appreciate it. And thank you. And thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Yeah. And there's some folks All out right. there that just stop getting jealous uh, when Raise comes on our show. Oh, are you knocking? <laughs> oh, are you? Uh, are you knocking our, our friend, Mr. Uh, wrestling I'm just guy? Joking. I'm All I'm saying is he was supposed to go to Lucha VIP and he didn't. Oh, hey, we invited him to some shows before he didn't show up. So um, I'll try to come to the next Lucha VIP. I'll try to go. So yes, definitely October 11th. I'm going to be there. So come out. October. And Pico, same area, Pico Rivera. Yep, at Ami Hacienda. Okay. All right. I'll take it out. And you hablo español, so I'll understand everything. <laughs> okay, well, yo hablo poquito, so translate for me. I'll translate for you, no problem. Whenever you, <laughs> awesome. you go to Mexico, I'll, 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 I got your back. So. Oh, really? Okay, I'm going to hold you that. Okay, let me get my passport first, because first of all, when we come back in the border, they're going to be like, huh, they're going to be like, yeah, maybe you're immigrants, maybe. Uh, hold on, let's wait for a sec. And we're going to take a long time to get to the back to the United States, you know. So that's how uh, it is. <laughs> Someone like you right. can go back in the, in, the, in, the, in the States easily, but me and you will be like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a passport, man. Don't even look at me like that. I know, but I still need one. <laughs> but I do need to go back to Mexico, though, to check some wrestling shows out there. So. All right, I'm holding you that then. All right. All right, all right, all right I got you back. I got you back. All right, thank you guys so much. I had a great time. All right, Rose. Well, what's he saying? Good night. Good night. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, that was Ray's good friend of ours. Uh, always oh, yeah. good to talk to her. Um, yeah, it's great to great to see you around. You know, everybody. Been... I was gonna say, anyone listening, like she could be coming to your town because she's getting booked everywhere. You never know, New York. You might have her. You don't know. You never know. So, you know, she's already doing Ohio, and uh, you know, she she could be anywhere. So, we'll look out. Yeah, AWS Week has been a very success. Uh, shout out to all the folks that came on, uh, Detura, Justin, Famous Being Raised. We appreciate you guys, and um, thanks for coming on. Uh, Let's take a, a real quick break and let's talk some wrestling. What's up? This is the phenomenal AJ Styles down here in uh, LA, kicking it with the uh, PWG, busting my tail. Freaking great tournament, the bowl of tournament is freaking amazing. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, everybody and anybody needs to listen to Wrestling Head Podcast. My name is Rich Swan, and we're at PWG. But you are now listening to the Wrestlehead Radio. Don't stop bullying me! And we're back, Wrestlehead Radio. Shout out to Rich Swan. Um, you, and for those that know why I'm giving a shout out, you should already know why. Um, but, uh, Let's go ahead and finish the show. Uh, we have a lot of talking to do. Uh, I already know Oscar didn't get a chance to catch NXT. Uh, how about you, uh, Tom? No, I I missed uh, NXT and uh, ROH TV this week. Yeah, well, I have a be- I had a better excuse because I had a freaking birthday yesterday. But you know what? Fuck NXT. Why not? No, 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 no. For one... uh, hold on, real quick. Don't say fuck NXT because it was good. So let me actually um, talk NXT real quick. I, I'm gonna give it a short, short period of time uh, of this. So basically, NXT uh, opened up with Tyler Breeze coming out, and uh, then uh, Adam Rose came out with his new character, basically the party pooper, uh, and uh, they're supposed to face each other, but that didn't end up happening. So Bull Dempsey comes down because you guys already know the previous week what happened. Uh, Breeze attacking him. 
uh, you know, for them losing uh, to, to Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. So um, next week on NXT, uh, you will have Tyler Breeze and Bull Dempsey going at it. And Dempsey's kind of over over there at NXT. Uh, you guys' thoughts on Breeze and Dempsey, basically this feud right here, it's kind of good for Dempsey, I think, because uh, he's kind of found his character, even though his, you know, the bull fit thing. But uh, you guys' thoughts on Breeze and uh, Bull Dempsey uh, on what happened last week to what's going to happen next week? Well, I kind of figured they were going to have a little rivalry when um, when I, when Regal announced he was going to be paired with Bull, and I was thinking, okay, they're going to lose this match. They're going to have a little rivalry. Um, I don't know. I just don't. I'm still not feeling Bull Dempsey, even though it's Bull fed. It's I I I don't know. I, I don't know. I just I I almost feel like WWE. I still have that feeling that WWE is making him look ridiculous due to the fact that he still did that tweet about Kevin Owens and the day of Tommy coming to WWE. And I I just think that he just they're just giving him a ridiculous character. And um, it could be over, over the crowd, but we can probably see another. Damien Sandow, which it was good at one point, but they kill it off. Uh, Tom? Yeah, I don't know. It's I, I feel like Tyler Breeze could be doing better. I don't know. It's Tyler Breeze has had a weird NXT career. You know, you think he's getting a real good, solid push. And he's always been up there, and he's always been spotlighted. You know, I mean... At, at, at the last takeover show, to have a match with Jushin Liger, obviously they wouldn't just put anybody in that spot. So obviously they have some confidence in him. But, you know, there's just been a lot of, like, ups and downs with him. And I, I feel like this is kind of like a pointless feud. I'm still not into into Bull Dempsey yet, even with this uh, new Bull Fit gimmick going on. Um, I... I I just don't see a lot in the guy. I don't see too much potential. You know, that that could always change. I'm not, you know, dead set on giving up on him. But it's just, I, I think there's a ton of more, uh, a ton of more non-indie guys that are in NXT that I think have more potential than both MC. Um, you know, you also have to think about the future. You know, both MC goes to the main roster, and I don't, I don't see him standing out or doing anything significant. He, he, he would get lost in the shuffle so quick. Yeah. Uh, I definitely understand where you guys are coming from. You know, just because you give him a little gimmick doesn't mean we had to feel what he's doing in the rain. Um, also, just throwing out there, um, Tyler, uh, Ty uh, Dillinger, he basically uh, had a match. He uh, basically um, went over uh, a local guy, and uh, I'm I don't I don't know if, if if I'm the only one, but I'm feeling his whole new gimmick, the whole ten thing. Uh, big fan of it, and I kind of see you know now that they created something for Ty Dillinger, a, a, like his own gimmick. I feel like he's gonna be something to watch. Uh, and NXT, you guys just start to Ty 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 Dillinger's new character. Well, the new character is working. I mean, um, I'm still not a fan of him, but it just seems like the crowd likes his new perfect tan thing. They 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 react to tan chant or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy if they found something for him instead of him being a jobber, just have him lose to Baron Corbin in five seconds. I might be from to get I got something for him. So um, let's just see what where, where it goes for you. But I guess you're not the only one that's uh, digging in. There's the NXT crowd digging in. I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely kind of digging it. I th- I thought I always thought that Ty Dillinger was always kind of underutilized. Um, so this perfect ten thing, uh, I, I think it's getting over pretty good. It's it, it's pretty unique. You know, it's something different. Um, and we'll we'll see we'll, you know we'll see what happens we'll see how far it could take him you know it's it's weird because I I think Todd Dillinger has a lot of potential but it's like I don't see him getting into the main event scene of NXT like I don't see him getting you know an NXT title shot 
Um, and it makes me wonder, because we, we've talked about this before, about NXT getting a secondary title maybe, because, you know, they've been extending their roster so much, and it's like, would a secondary title kind of help out uh, some of the lower card guys, some of the mid card guys, kind of give them some attention and spotlight because it's kind of like if you're not going for the title or if you're not at least getting in, in, into a number one contendership role, you're just kind of like stuck there. So, uh, you know, it's always a possibility to think about, but. Um, I'm thinking what Ty is doing so far, and we'll just have to see what happens with him going forward. Definitely, dude. Um, I'm with the whole secondary title, which is something I'm probably going to ask uh, our Twitter followers after the show. Uh, it makes perfect sense because, like you said, they are expanding. And and I know we talked about Solomon Crow plenty of times. But Solomon Crow and Apollo Crews had, had a match uh, on NXT, which guys, I think you guys should check. It's probably Solomon Crow's best match, even though he came up short. Uh, these two have history in, you know, the Evolve Dragon Gate uh, company. So uh, this is a match that folks need to go ahead and check out. And, uh, you know, with Solomon Crow getting more TV time, you definitely need to go ahead and make that second title or on NXT, I would say. Uh, but, uh, you guys definitely got to check that match out. And also, of course, you got to check out Jenny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, went against Baron Corbin and Rhino. Uh, big props up to uh, Baron Corbin and uh, Rhino. I really got to give it to Baron Corbin because this, usually when we see Baron Corbin, it's fast matches. He worked well with Jenny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa. Um, another match I think you guys should check out as soon as you get a chance. Also, in, on... Um, Last night on NXT, Dana Brooke and Emma basically uh, said uh, they basically caught out all the new girls that have been showing up, you know, on NXT. And they said uh, uh, playtime is over for those girls. And I guess we'll have to look out and see what happens with Dana Brooke and Emma, what they got planned for the new chicks uh, in NXT. Uh, and, of course, uh, I just want to... Low key, uh, I want to give everybody uh, an update on what's going on with the uh, Dusty Rhodes uh, um, tournament. Uh, right now, you have Enzo Amore and uh, Colin Cassidy. They'll be going against uh, Finn Balor and uh, Samoa Joe. Uh, that's that's going to be happening. I'm not sure when. They haven't really said. Uh, the Vibe Villains are going to be going against Scott, Scott Dawson and Dash. Uh, next week, I believe, on um, NXT. And also NXT, you have the Vibe Villains also will be in action against uh, um, Blake and uh, and uh, Murphy for the for the NXT tag titles. The Hype Bros, they advance, and they're going to be going against uh, uh, Jordan Jason and uh, um, Chad uh, Gable. And, of course, uh, Rhino and... Uh, Baron Corbin were the first team to go to, go to the Final Four. So that's just an update to the folks that need to know what's going on in uh, the NXT Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic. And, of course, last night it was announced that uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks will be uh, facing each other at the next TakeOver in a 30-minute uh, Iron Man match. So uh, that's it for NXT, folks. Uh, sorry guys, I know you guys need to watch NXT and I still talk to NXT, but I thought it had to be talked about because it was a, such a good episode. Once you guys watch it, you understand. Um, but let's get into Ring of Honor. The complete card, I have it right here, and let's give our our um, our our uh, predictions on the show. Um, right. I remember. Remember back in the days we guys we used to have the wrestling heads champ of uh, uh, like who had the most better predictions. We need to bring that back soon. Uh, maybe not uh, for. Uh, was these, I the uh, last champion? <laughs> I, I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> I think I was too. Uh, maybe not for these two shows, but uh, let's go and give our predictions. Um, you got um, the boys versus. Silas Young 
That's what it says. You mean, uh, you know, you know, you mean uh, Dalton Castle against Silence Young, and the stipulation is that Silence Young loses, he becomes one oh. of Dalton Castle's boys. And if yeah, Dalton, yeah, and if Silence Young loses, I mean, wins, then then uh, he takes the boys. Um, if I had to predict, I'm gonna go with Dalton Castle, and you're gonna see Silence Young become one of his boys because you just can't take away the boys from. Dalton Castle, that's like his, that's like part of his entrance, and he has probably the best entrance in Ring of Honor, so you can't, you cannot take that away. Yeah, I'm with that. Uh, definitely gotta keep uh, Dalton with the boys. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you guys. I think Dalton Castle wins. Uh, you know, you got, you got to keep elevating the guy even more. Um, even though with Dalton Castle. I will say that wins and losses with him aren't exactly like a big killer, but you're going on a major pay-per-view. Um, you want to spotlight him, and it's nothing against, you know, Silas Young, but I just feel like right now Don Castle's way, you know, he's got way more momentum than Silas Young. So when you're going on pay-per-view and you're getting in new uh, new people watching, you want to spotlight uh you know, the guys that are getting, you know, the biggest reactions, the most popular guys. So, uh, Dalton Castle goes over, and I think Silas Young becomes one of the boys. Definitely. Um, next match, you got Cedric Alexander versus Moose in a no disqualification matchup. I see Moose going over. Moose has to go over. It wouldn't make sense for Cedric to go over, you know. Uh, real quick, how about, hold, hold that thought. We have a caller. Not sure um, who this is, but let's take the call. 404, you're live on Wrestling Heads Radio. Who's calling? Hi, um, my name is May. What's Hi. going on, May? I'm just putting me in on your thoughts and everything. Um, what's this about it? What, you want to talk about Ring of Honor? Say it one more time, sweetheart. Did you want to talk Ring of Honor? I'm lost on who that is. I'm just listening. I, I came in on it. Okay. Well, I'll let you listen in uh, to the show. I'll, I'll, I'll put you back on mute, okay? Okay. Shout out, shout out to May. Um, we'll, we'll put you right back on as soon as we finish with this Ring of Honor talk, May. Uh but yeah, uh, I I definitely see uh, Moose going over because it, it, it definitely wouldn't make sense for for uh, Cedric to win after he's already won twice. So uh, I'm for sure picking Moose. Yeah, I I, I remember uh, we had this talk, me, you, and uh, Matt. I guess Tom was in there too about you know after this feud, what's going to be next for Cedric Alexander? Is he going to come down? Doing nothing again, like what's what's gonna happen? And you got Beta Scott w- with him. I mean, I mean, I, it's, just, it's very a question mark. But I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with Moose on this one. But uh, I think if, if Moose wins this match, he could go on with doing better things. But what's what's gonna gain for Cedric Alexander if he wins this match? You know. That's that's the right. question mark. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we we were talking about this uh, the three of us and that grant last week, and you know me and Matt said this that the whole point of this was not to put over Cedric Alexander as a heel. You know the the whole point of this was to just turn Cedric heel just to put Moose over as a baby face, and you know me and Matt both agreed that this whole feud has just been flat. It is it has fallen so flat like. It is. It's just been so uninteresting, and you know we, we we've talked about Ring of Honor's booking in the past. It's just, you know, I understand you, you want to put certain guys over, and that's fine. You know, I'm not debating the decision to put Moose over, but uh, I don't know. It's this this feud just when you know when it first started, I was like, okay, this could have some you know momentum behind it. It could have some steam, but. It just went nowhere, and it's 
it, it's a shame to Cedric Alexander because I know we we're also talking about, you know, where he's getting Ring of Honor and after, you know, we, we always talked about it, the Roderick Strong feud. He had so much momentum. It looked like he was poised, you know, to possibly become a TV champion or at least get higher up in the card, and he's just been lost in the mix ever since. And it's a, it, it's really a shame because Cedric Alexander is so incredibly talented, and I feel like he should be better utilized. Um, and that's, that's part of Ring of, Ring of Honor's problem. You know, they're not perfect. Um, they they need to start utilizing the guys that, you know, fans want to see, like Cedric Alexander and ACH and Matt Seidel more. So, um, but I, I think Moose goes over. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know what happens with Cedric. I don't think he's going to do anything of importance anytime soon. And like I said, it's a shame. Speaking of ACH and Matt Seidel, those two, they have actually a match, best of five series match. These two are also a tag team. So it's going to be entertaining to see uh, two of the best high flyers in the game uh, have a matchup. And uh, if, if I had to choose who goes over on this, uh, for some reason I'm going to pick Matt Seidel. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, this is a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Seidel. I just don't know what's this thing they're doing, like the best of five series or whatever they're doing. Um, I have no idea what was the point of it, but, um, yeah, I guess I go with Seidel. Probably competition is he was the best. But yeah, Seidel, cause, I I mean, yeah, they do that once in a while with tag partners. You know, they'll, like, put them against each other and do, like, some friendly competition and face versus face stuff, I think works. Um, I don't think Seidel goes over. Um, I think ACH wins this one, even though it's not. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like, with, like I said, with Ring of Honor, you're, you're trying to reach out to as many new people as you can because they're expanding so quick. So even though there's a WWE name in there and it's a name – that people recognize, and you automatically think, okay, you want to put him over because it's a name people know. You want to have people kind of establish a relationship with the Ring of Honor guy, which is ACH. So I think ACH wins, um, but it should be it should be a good match. It's, it's a good undercard match to have on the card here. Yeah. Um there's a match uh, that's, that the Briscoes are having, open challenge. Majority of all the tag teams are already used. What team is going to answer for that open challenge? There's been a couple of rumors out there. Um, Kenny, Kenny King and uh, Red Titus uh, will get together and uh, come back. I, I don't know. We have his thoughts because I have no clue who it would be. Yeah. Yeah, I did hear a small rumor that Kenny King is out of TNA. And, um, yeah, I mean, I mean that could be a big surprise if Kenny King and Red Titus team up. Um, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I don't know. That's, 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 I have a feeling it's going to be someone that's going to shock us. Or it could shock be New us, Japan. But, uh, it could be some people from New Japan. It could be anybody, honestly. Honestly, that's one of those, you know, questions where you got to just sit back and watch and wait and see who it is. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure, but I think New Japan has some house shows this weekend, so I don't think that they can fly in any New Japan guys. Um, I thought Kenny King burned his bridges with Ring of Honor. Maybe. Well, was he was just, at the last. Yeah. Well, me and, well, uh, me and Oscar went to the anniversary he, show, and he was there. He was what? backstage and everything. Yeah, because, you know, he was part of, you know, that he was part of that time. Maybe it was just with Jim Cornette, but I thought he burned a lot of his bridges with Ring of Honor when he just up and left uh, for TNA. Yeah, but, uh, I know. You know. And I, I said the same thing about Austin Aries. I thought he would never come back to Ring of Honor. Look. That's 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 another person. You, you, you see, we're we're talking about mystery. What if it's 
Austin Aries, you know, who knows? Like Roderick is Roderick Strong booked on the show? Roderick Strong is part of the number one contender matchup, oh, yeah, which is right, the next right. match we could talk about. Uh yeah, you got was, Roddy was Strong thinking, uh, You got yeah, Roddy Strong say, Ad- yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So I was gonna say, like Roderick Strong and Austin Aries, uh do some generation X. See, I think that would be a perfect thing. I would you know who would want to see back in the Ring of Honor that hasn't been there in a long time? Jack Evans. You know, after seeing him in PWC. What if, what if, we, what if we it's a helico in him? Who knows? It can't even anybody. work. That's what? what? I mean, it can't even work because, you know, there are I mean, kind of like to work to work one show, you know, I mean, if they work pro pro wrestling gorilla, you know, all weekend. But the biggest though, you know, is due to contract situation. Pro wrestling gorilla is not live on pay per view. You know, but it's can't. still on DVD. No, but there's a difference here. DVD, they don't care about DVDs. I mean, you, you're putting them on on, your, on on Ring of Honor's product. I mean, you know, you a, don't, don't forget, know. they do work with Lucha Underground. I mean, who knows? Anything's possible. It's any. It's a lot of stuff out there that we don't know that's possible. I mean, whoever thought Tommaso Ciampa and Jenny Gargano was going to go to NXT? Shit's possible, so who knows? I mean, but just like I said, like I don't want to stick on this Subject about who's gonna face the Briscoes, so who, cause who knows? That's like a hard question. So, but we'll see. Um, next match: Roddy Strong, Adam Cole, AJ Styles, Michael Elgin. No more contender match. Um, if I had to choose somebody going over, it's for sure Adam Cole. Yeah, it's gotta be Adam Cole. They're trying to make him their next top baby face. I mean, it wouldn't make sense if AJ Styles win it because we don't know what his uh, future is. So, I don't know. I'm going to say Adam Cole. See, you know, I'm down to two people. I'm down to Adam Cole and AJ Styles, and I mentioned this when we were talking about Ring of Honor the last time. You could have AJ Styles win and do an AJ styles Jay Lethal match um, just as a one-time thing because that's a big-time draw. You know, that's a big-time match, and you can put that whenever. You can do that at a, um, what's the November show? I think it's Glory by Honor is the, is the November show. You could do it at Final you Battle. You could do it at Final Battle. Yeah, and you could do it as a one-time-off match. You know, you could have Jay Lethal go over AJ Styles, and that would be a big win for Jay Lethal. That would be a big Adam win for Ring Cole. of Honor, period. Yeah, and that's that's a big time matchup. Not to say that Jay Lethal versus Adam Cole won't be a big time matchup because that'll be one as well. But to draw people into one show, you know, I, I think you have to do that. Adam Cole, you can give a title shot later to. You know, you can have him win another number one contenders match or somehow get into the mix with Jay Lethal later on because Adam Cole is going to be sticking around. So. I'm not, you know what I'm gonna go with AJ Styles on this one. All right, um, AJ Adam Cole's over here. Next match, you got the Addiction putting their tag titles on the line against the Kingdom and the Young Bucks. I think the Kingdom has to go over in this one. Uh. I mean, just thinking what you're saying. I mean, this shouldn't be a hard I, uh, question. I mean, the Young Bucks are busy in Japan, uh, so you can count them out. Why do you want Christopher Daniels and Kazarian to be your champs when I mean, you can have the Kingdom, who are a ring of honor all the time? Yeah, true, but, I mean, I try to think, like, you have them win it. Who, what's next for them? Same question with it's uh it's called it's, it's called Hanson it's called Hanson and Ray Monroe they come back yeah it's, it it could be either or. it could be that the kingdom or it could be addiction to win and, and go against those two ah uh, fuck it I think addiction won it I was gonna be thinking hard <laughs> I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with sketch and I'm gonna say. The kingdom, I think, 
you know, the addiction drain has been so lackluster. You need to get the titles out for them. Get it on people that are actually getting heat. Um, and the kingdom are doing that. And, uh, yeah, just like Skid said, I think it sets up a perfect war machine versus kingdom match. You could do that at final battle. Um, that would be definitely a big time matchup. Um, but I, I always mention this, Reign of Honor needs more tag teams. I know the Briscoes are kind of like back to tag teaming because Jay Briscoe's out of the world title picture. But you, you need more tag teams in there. Do you, you know, know what they need? Teams? They need Trevor Lee and Andrew Aver to get signed over there. And that's what they need right there. Or they need Chris Saban back and have him and Matt Seidel start teaming up. Something. Yeah, just, just you know, because you can never really have... Or you could throw ACH and, and Matt Seidel, have, have, that shit, have their little bullshit, best out of five series, get over with. Throw them back in the tag division. Yeah, There's a lot of stuff you can you, do. You can never really have too many tag teams. And, you know, you can't keep doing the same matches over and over again. And it's all these... You know, Ring of Honor's go-to thing is, okay, multi-man tag match. Multi-man tag match. We need the Bucks. Let's get the Bucks on the show. Let's throw them on the show. Let's throw them into this match. You need more credible and solid tag teams in there on a consistent basis to really build up that division. And because that's what separated Ring of Honor, I think, from so many companies for so, you know, for so long was their tag team division. You know, you had the Briscoes. You had Steam and Generico. You had the Bucks. You had all these great tag teams. You had Chris Generation Hero Black. and uh, Cesaro. Yeah, you, you know, Kings of Wrestling, Rhett Titus and Kenny King. You had all these, you know, really solid tag teams always competing for the title. That's what they need to get back to. So uh, we'll see about that. Right now, uh, right now, I feel like the WWE is killing with the tag team game, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, but yeah, um, real quick, uh, Tom, uh, I don't mean to rush you, bro, but, uh, we, we got like 24 minutes on the show and we still got to go over WWE's pay-per-view. Uh, want to go ahead and, uh, you see you picked the kingdom, right? Yeah, kingdom. Definitely. All right. Um, next match for the TV title, Bobby Fish versus Jay Lee. Do I see Bobby Fish going over? <laughs> Yeah, I think Rico's winning. I'm sorry, losing one of the titles. He's gonna lose the TV title, and yeah, I I, I agree. Bobby Fish is gonna win this title, but I disagree with Matt. I don't see a Red Dragon breakup. I'm gonna go with Bobby Fish. You need a big title change. Perfect time to do it on pay per view. It'll be it'll be over. Bobby Fish is over. Uh, perfect chance to do it. Bobby Fish is your new TV champion. Yeah, and it's crazy, you know, we also m- mentioned, um, you know, you mentioned the breakup, Kyle O'Reilly and Lethal, I feel like Bobby Fish kind of gets involved in, in the match, Kyle almost has a win, and it kind of caused a little tension between the team after, you know, they'll be cool still, because they're actually going to Japan, and they're going to face uh, Kushida and Alex Shelley, so they kind of have tension going on in New Japan too, and you have Shelley and, um, and, uh, you have Alex Shelley and uh, Kushida win that match, I think. That's just my opinion. And for those who, then you bring him back to Ring of Honor. Then you have Bobby Fish and Kyle Riley start feuding. I think Kyle Riley has to be the heel, though. Uh, I, Kyle Riley is way better suited as a face than a heel. I think Bobby Fish is a better heel than a face. So, and you know, Ky- Kyle O'Reilly, I see as like he could play as a heel too. I've seen him play a heel. Yeah, yeah. You know, when he was with Future Shock, he was he was a good heel with Adam Cole, but he was, I don't he was know. Good. I, he's, he's 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 a great heel with Bobby Fish too. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like Ky- I feel like Kyle O'Reilly is what. Ring of Honor wanted with Davey Richards. Like, Davey Richards was supposed to be the big baby face of the company when he had his big title run and he was doing his matches. You can go, honestly, you can go either way, I think, in my my opinion. Yeah, 
I, I, I just feel like eventually Kyle O'Reilly has to be the baby face of the company, like the guy in the company, because, like I said, I feel like if if they, if they wanted Davey Richards at one point to be the man, you got to put Kyle O'Reilly there too. And I, I think it's the perfect guy to do it. Definitely. Well, we are done with our Ring of Honor talk, and now it is time to talk about the WWE pay-per-view Night of Champions. Before I mention that, there's a lot of rumors going out there that WWE is very interested in bringing back EC3. Well, um, they should have not released them in the first place because you can do fucking with them what to do with TNA. brought him in and then got him his character and then there you go. It, it worked out for him. Um, we'll see. I mean, uh, who knows the feature of T, uh, TNA wrestling goals? I mean, I know right now he's the, he's the current champion, but uh, who knows what happens with the company after, what, I, I believe October is the last show in, on Destination America, so who knows what the feature of TNA wrestling, but I also hearing that they want to bring back Jeff Hardy and Kurt Angle, so... We'll see. They want to bring her to Hardy's period, I heard. But uh, yeah, because because they feel like you know they're at a point where they can um, I, like you say, they could maybe sign them to like a legend contract and maybe put them in the Hall of Fame and all that. And stuff. they probably have, they probably want to have a last match with the Dullies and the Hardys, but we'll see. Uh, speaking of the Dully Boys, the Dully Boys have they are set to release a DVD. Uh, WWE giving them mad love. Uh, I believe they're going to be a uh, downloadable content uh, on their next video game. And the other Dudley Boys are also uh, going to be uh, having their own DVD. It's going to be a documentary um, plus plus match matches too. So it's going to be a mix of both, which is dope. I like the documentary type of uh, DVD. So congrats to the Dudleys. Uh, you guys are on your way to the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, but, uh, let's move on, uh, again, as well, before I, I, I move on, NXT TakeOver in London is sold out, folks, um, so, yeah, and also, one more thing, uh, Lana, they're, they're planning on putting Lana and Rusev back together, uh, I think that's the best thing to do for both those people, because, uh, Rusev was looking like shit, and Lana was looking like whatever, um, you know, so that's good for uh, that. But let's go over um, the Knight of Champions uh, card, shall we? So, on uh, the kickoff, you will have the team of Neville and the Lucha Dragons against the Ascension and Stardust. I'm going to go with Neville and the Lucha Dragons to go over. Uh... Shouldn't even be a hard question, bro. <laughs> yeah, but you have to think of this. If they're gonna continue you, this Neville and and fucking, you gotta uh, start Star your, your show off with to have the crowd happy. This is the pre-show. You gotta have the crowd happy. Fuck, I'm picking Stardust and Crimson. Neville and Lucha Dragons. I great minds think alike. Um, you got Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, and I do not know how to say this guy's name. Uh, can one of you guys say that? Braun, Braun Strowman. And he said Braun great minds think alike. <laughs> Braun Strowman. What is the uh, man? I don't know how to say the guy's name. Just like you don't know how to say. Uh, all star extravaganza, but anyways, uh, Roman I Reigns. Say, I can say oh. Ishii's full name, Tamahano Ishii. Can you say that? Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> uh, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and the mystery partner. I'm uh, telling you, it's gonna be a Super Dragon. He's gonna be the mystery shit. partner. Sit in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, I'm gonna say the mystery partner is gonna be Finn Balor and uh, and 
and uh, you can say Ben Valor and uh, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose will beat the Wyatt family. You guys are all smoking rocks. Um, I'm going to Mystery Partner. Um, most likely, uh, rumors have been is either going to be The Rock or Chris Jericho. So I don't know what, if that's right or wrong, but we'll see. Uh, but um, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose team is going to win. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Reigns and Ambrose's team. Uh, you know, I'm thinking it might be The Rock. Um, but I said on Monday, I believe, um, if they're going to bring someone in, you bring in uh, that guy, Hugo Knox from NXT, who hasn't uh, debuted yet, the guy with the really big hands, if you don't know who I'm talking about. Uh, get in another really big guy. You know, do another debut. Uh, he'll get over really quick. Uh, that's what I think they should do. But you know, could be the Rock. So who knows? Definitely. Um, next, Dolph Ziggler versus Rusev. Um, I, I don't know. I see Rusev going over here somehow. Uh, I don't see Ziggler winning. Uh, who cares about this feud? Uh, I'm going Rusev. Ziggler might win, but I'm going Rusev. Uh, um, this whole Ziggler Samurai thing is giving me a question mark. So I guess I'm going to go fucking Ziggler. I'm going to go with Ziggler. Um, I don't know. I just feel like he's just going to go over. There's really no reason for Rusev to go over. I don't know. This feud sucks. Fuck it. Next match, Kevin Owens versus Ryback for the IC title. After watching Ryback interfere in tonight's match and try to give Kevin Owens a cell shock, I'm going with Kevin Owens as your new IC champ. Um, I kind of, I kind of want to go the route what Tom said on Monday. He thinks what well, Tom said that he thinks that. Kevin Owens will like like get disqualified or something on this show, but wins it and at Hell in a Cell in the Staples Center, and that's how he wins the Intercontinental Championship. So I guess I'm gonna go right back by fucking either Kevin Owens walks out like he usually do or or gets himself disqualified something like that. We'll see. Good luck, yeah. Kevin. Hope you don't get hurt like CM Punk. So. Yeah, uh, Kevin Owens, protect your ribs. Make sure he doesn't uh, kick you. But, uh, yeah, just like what Oscar said, that's what I think is going to happen. Uh, either screwy finish or DQ, count out something, uh, sets up another match. It maybe it doesn't even happen at Hell in a Cell. Maybe it happens on uh, the Raw. It, it might happen on the Raw after uh, Night of Champions. You know, Owens gets his rematch, wins it on Raw. Um but I don't think Owens wins it on Sunday. Uh, Dudley Boys versus New Day. Uh, I kind of see the New Day uh, somehow retaining these. And uh, I see the Dudley Boys winning it at the next pay-per-view. Hell on the cell. Uh, yeah, I think I see New Day winning it. He, he just got, he just had put them the tag belts back on them. So, well, I, I, I kind of see something of what you're saying, Skits. Like, they, they do something dumb, like they get themselves disqualified or something. Uh, or they just beat the Dudley Boys. But, uh, I think, they, I think they're going to beat the Dudley Boys. I'm going to go with New Day on this one. I think it sets up uh, a rematch for... Wait, and double. you make it a tables match, too, so in the next preview. Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking, is that because this is a normal match, New Day wins it, and then Dudley's challenge again, except they make it a tables match, and then that's when the Dudley's win the title. So I think New Day wins this uh, this Sunday. Definitely. 
Um, Charlotte versus Nikki Bella. If Nikki Bella gets disqualified or counted out, Charlotte will be the next Divas champ. Charlotte going over, of course. Yeah, I'm going with Charlotte as well. It's time to get Nikki off that fucking belt. You got what you got. You want her to beat AJ Lee's record. You got it. So, there you go. And Charlotte, it's your new Divas champion. Yeah, Charlotte. John Cena versus Seth Rollins. John Cena uh, gets the title back. Yeah, and plus, this is this rumors are saying this is going to be actually the main event. So, yeah, I guess uh, I'll say Cena's going to walk out United States champion. Let me just say, there's no way in hell this is the main event. No way in fucking hell. I know it's Cena, but they have barely built this match compared to uh, this thing, Seth Rollins match. But I think Cena wins here. Uh, Got to get one of the belts off of Cena. Uh, I mean, Rollins. So, Cena wins the U.S. title again. As long as he's not world champion, I couldn't care. So, uh, this is fine. And Sting versus Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins wins the match. Yeah, Seth Rollins. You know, he did just get Sting his WWE win this past Monday on Raw. So, I I felt like WWE will, will get, like, will get killed if fucking, you know, Sting will never get his win. So, yeah, there you go. Seth Rollins will beat Sting. And... Question, guys. Was Sheamus getting involved tonight or that that uh, night? God, I hope not. Uh, nah, I don't think so. All right, real quick before we let everybody go, I quote: Question from somebody, they asked Paige, "Do you think the WWE uh uh took a shot at?" CM Punk for the Nikki Bella, you know, Divas, uh, for holding the title longer than AJ Lee. This is this is Paige's answer um, at uh, a Q and A at um, at the Wizard World Comic Con. Uh, she said, "Oh, I don't think so. Uh, don't get me involved in this. I don't need the heat, brother." Paige said. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't get involved with that crap. Smart answer. Huh. Well, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's the the, it did the video is actually the up. Though. The video is yeah. actually up. So, if folks want to watch it, it is up on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, this is the end of Wrestling Heads Radio. Uh, next week we will be here live Monday on um here on uh WH radio. I'm not sure I, I I'm not sure if I'm gonna be on here or not, but Nova Pro Wrestling, uh their promoter will be here on the show as we talk about their promotion, which features guys like Sanjay Dutt, uh Tim uh Dots, the Bravado Brothers. Uh, Chase Owens and a couple of other uh, wrestlers will be on that show. So, and also Thursday, uh, next Thursday, making his return to wrestling his radio. He's been out here for a, a lot of times, just like Ray's. Eli Everfly returns back um, here on uh, Wrestling His Radio, and there's a possibility we might get coming back to Wrestling His Radio the gorgeous. Ali Parker probably the same day as Eli. Uh, just stay tuned, people. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Wrestling Heads. Um, we are also on Facebook.com backslash Wrestling Heads. Uh, I'm also thinking about making a group on Facebook, like like it's like a regular group, kind of like uh, like uh, the SoCal uh, Pro Wrestling group. Like you know, people can post whatever. I'm thinking about making a group uh, on the Facebook. So look out for that. Uh, also, we are on Periscope uh, at Wrestling Heads. Uh, WrestlingHeads.com is the website 
for all the updates in professional wrestling from WWE to the independence to Ring of Honor, NXT, whatever. You know, New Japan. Uh, shout out to all of our writers. Uh, I'm WH Skits on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on there on Twitter. Uh, I'm also on Periscope, too. Uh, just uh, Google Wrestling Heads and you'll find it, anything that you want to know. Yeah, well, you can follow me at Sinister632 on Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope. And, uh, yeah, you can, uh, yeah, this, uh, oh, yeah, new gears on the way. Don't forget about that. But you can get them right now, actually, the, the Wrestling Heads versus Everybody on, um, I'm for wrestling these dot com slash wrestling heads. If you don't want to wait for us getting getting your shirt, so might as well get it there. And uh, yeah, just just wait till Monday. I'll, I'll be on. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Um. One more thing before I give it the time. YouTube dot com backslash wrestling heads. Subscribe. Oscar's doing hard work on the YouTube game. So uh. You know what? Love. I wanted to. You know what? I want to say thank you for you guys for subscribing. We've been getting gaining more subscribers on YouTube as of late. So, anyway, if, there, if you're listening on YouTube, thank you for subscribing and uh, keep telling your fans about us. All right. Well, you can follow me on Twitter at to tweet me. Pretty sure my Periscope is the same as my Twitter. Has it linked up? So follow me on both. Make sure to follow you back. Um, make sure you guys are following the Elite Podcast Network at Elite Podcast Net on Twitter at Weekly Wrestling Podcast. Uh, I know Eyes on the Rain is coming on Sunday. Uh, Wrestling with Myself, I think, is dropping this week. A new Uncle Mike and Tom show. Indie Power Rankings every Tuesday and Wednesday. I know uh, I think Mac Rant's going to be tweeting live coverage of Alpha One Wrestling this Sunday. So, if you want coverage for that, make sure you're following Weekly Wrestling Podcast on Twitter. Alpha One doing some big things. Got a big show this weekend, as they always do. So, big shout-out to Weekly Wrestling Podcast and Alpha One Wrestling. Good luck to them. And, uh, yeah, make sure you guys are just, you know, support supporting the indies, Smart Mark Video, High Spots, uh, all the on-demand stuff. Smash Wrestling On Demand, AIW Archives, AIW On Demand, Progress On Demand, New Japan World, you name it, someone's got it, tons of stuff out there, and that's all I got. You know, before we go, I have a question for you, bro. What's up? Is he going to direct him? Anyway, oh I'm, I'm skits. That's Tom. Oscar left already. Until next week. This is Wrestling Heads Radio. Peace. Peace.